Who's got two thumbs? And yes, I am thinking of one specific person. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Mm-hmm. Thank you to Tootie But Tootie But mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. For that wonderful catchphrase submission. And welcome to. Welcome to Moss Osley Candida. It seems. A hive of scum and villainy? Is that a more wretched hive of scum and villainy? You will be hard pressed to find. <laughs> is that what he says? In your you will be hard pressed to find <laughs> in your neck of the woods. <laughs> That's right. And in then he, your neck of the and woods. Then he announces who's turned a hundred on Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi, <laughs> pretty lady. <laughs> Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang, the best of 2020, part one. That's right. Part one. Out That's of how right. many parts? Question mark? At, no, out of four. Oh. <laughs> that, right. With an exclamation mark, though. Sure. Sure. Uh, I like to say exclamation point. I say exclamation point, too, but during one of our clips, uh, I pointed that out to a person saying, why do you say ex- exclamation mark? Because I thought it was just point, and then I looked it up, and either are fine, and so I felt stupid. Either so I are, cut that out of the clip. Either smart. <laughs> either are fine, but if you if you already have mark for question, you don't say question point. That is a good. No one mark. says question point. I mean point. Question. That's a good mark. <laughs> hi, oh hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> the room. Oh, high point. <laughs> so, sometimes I miss room. I, uh, the room, of course, we're talking about. The Isn't room. The <laughs> <Da, da> room. <laughs> Boy, those Bears fans, hey, they never Dicka. quite got into that. Dicka, you went to the movies. What'd you see? <laughs> the <Da> room. room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, uh, the, the movie's not quite as enjoyable. I remember when I saw it the first time, I was like, this is a new Rocky Horror. I'm going to come back next month when they show it. And then it was yeah. boring the next month. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's just, it's it's not a fun watch. No, it's or, not. not a fun rewatch. And you know what? It bothered me that people tried to Rocky Horrify it yeah. uh, in theater. Because I saw it once in theaters and it really bugged me. Like you guys, the, the you can't Rocky just, Horror part of it. Yeah, you can't just make this. That's right. The ro- Rocky Horror is a unique thing. You can't just say, "Ah, we'll do that with this." Well, then again, I mean, uh, the person who invented Elvis or uh, invented rock and roll, I mean, Elvis. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he invented rock and roll. Then suddenly, everyone started copying it, and now we have a burge- you know, wonderful now, Scott. Uh, yes, Scott. What's that now? He did not invent rock and roll. Certainly he did. Elvis Presley. I can't think of a single person who did any rock before him. Elvis Aaron Presley, the the brother of Jesse Garen Presley. That guy who's dead at Graceland. Yeah. He did not invent it. He is he is the room to uh, L- <laughs> Little Richard's uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> Little Richard and the Rocky Horror Picture Show have a lot in common. Now that I'm thinking, I would love to have seen him star in it. Their 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 similarities are greater than their differences. That's right. The little V uh, is is eating up Little Richard rather than. Rocky Horror Picture Show? Is that what... The you little know, V. You know the greater than and oh. less than thing? <laughs> the, the way I learned yes. it in school was that imagine it's like Pac-Man or a, or a monster yes. and it's eating the big thing. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, very good. Yes. Is that how you remember it? Yes. I, rem- I remember my teacher once asked me, how do you, how do you tell the difference between lowercase d's and b's? None of your classmates can. And I said, I don't know. That one's a d and that one's a b. <laughs> You're being a D and calling me a B. <laughs> You're being a D and a B. <laughs> so get out of here, you dick bitch. <laughs> Ever thus to dick bitches. <laughs> the immortal bard. Um, by the way, I am Scott Ackerman. Oh, this is the, the best way. of Comedy Bang Bang Part one you of that 2020. All of that. And uh, we are outside. Uh, Paul F. Tonkin. Yes, hi. Oh, that's Jesus I sh- Christ. I, I mentioned your name. You, you reach back into the midst of time. I never said that we were outside. Oh. You know, not that part. You re, you reset. That is the best of 2020 yes. before you even introduce me. Sure. Me, <laughs> me a guy <laughs> who's here. You dick bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's going to be the new thing for 2021. Hey, that is going to be the new thing. <laughs> um, I do want to, uh, well, I wanted to set the scene and, and tell you what is going on. Yeah. Uh, this is the, uh, every year do we, it, Marvin Gaye. we play, uh, oh, mercy, mercy me, the ecology. <laughs> 
<laughs> I tell you, what a beautiful song. And then for it to be about the ecology? Mm, turns out it was important. Uh, yeah, it's important, but I remember when I heard it, I was like... We should have listened to that song. It should be a love song. It should be. To the ecology. <laughs> Um, and what a, uh, like, I've, I've never seen such a boner drop of a parenthetical, like, mercy, mercy me. That's such, such passion filled, like, what a relation to what an angsty, you know, romantic relationship. And then it's like, no, 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 the ecology. Wait, so it's mercy, mercy me, parentheses, the ecology. The ecology, yeah. And parentheses. Is that song not called What's Going On? Well, they're two different songs. Do you think all songs are the same? Aren't they? <laughs> Let me let me sing one. For I you. like song. Let me sing one for you. <laughs> sure. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday mercy, to mercy you. Mercy, mercy me. The ecology. <laughs> I thought that was what's going on. Wait, doesn't he say? Wait, mercy, why? mercy me goes this way. Oh, mercy, mercy me. Things and what they used, used to, to be. be. Yeah, which sounds like it should be about like a one. You know, oh no, you and I broke up, and we need to get back together. This is this is fucking with my head. Okay. All right, so how does what's going on go? And don't do the chorus. How don't do the chorus. Okay, it goes. Uh, wimp, wimp, wimp. I've been really trying. That's section. No, baby. that's not what's going on. Yeah, let's, let's get it on. Oh, you're right. <laughs> what's going on is. <laughs> let's go. No, wait, it is, isn't it? Wimp. Oh no, that is what. Let's get it on. What is what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, that's the what's chorus. What's going on? The song doesn't start. What's going on? Uh, do I need to find this on the internet I think for us you to? Do. Otherwise, we're going to have unfinished business. <laughs> unfinished business. Um, and I then need... we'll be like ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I was perhaps not quite prepared to play clips on the internet, but talk for a second while I look for this. I like, I'm very prepared to play clips on the internet, and it's weird that Scott's doing it because I'm over here. You cannot even imagine the setup that I have <laughs> on my side of the patio. Okay, here we go. I'm going to. Press. Oh no, I can't do it. I can't. I. I. You can't do it. I can't. After the fact, uh, uh, record a clip. But le- I can put the computer or my phone up to the mic, which put is what I will do. Put your phone up to the mic. 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 All right, here we go. By the way, uh, you know him from. No, you shut up. You know him from. <laughs> Uh, that show where she's tattooed, uh, Fantasy Island. <laughs> um, uh, you know him from his own podcast, The Neighborhood Listen, the Star Trek Directive. Star Trek The Pod Directive. Star Trek The Pod Directive. Stay F. Homekins. Stay F. Homekins. Freedom. Pa- Freedom, that's right. That's one that we do together, along with uh, She Who Shall Remain Nameless. <laughs> Uh, Paul of Tompkins is here. Hi, everybody. It's my pleasure to be here at the year end. This is an ad before him. Oh, I was going to say, I don't remember this part. December to remember. December to remember. We are taping this in December, and it is December when you're listening to this, perhaps. Maybe you'll remember. Okay, here we go. I just want to ask a question. Oh, good. You got some of the weirdest version. <laughs> okay. This is the official video. 2019. All right. Let me what? find a different 2019? one. 2019? Hey, okay, guys. We, we've really been slacking off. we got to make an official video for <laughs> Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. Yeah, everybody's talking. Now I remember. That's right. Okay. i got to hear Mercy, Mercy Me now. Okay. Here we go. I think it just it doesn't start with Mercy, Mercy Me. All things ain't what they used to be. <laughs> to bin. No, or not to be. Jeffrey to bin. To bin or not to bin. Now you can understand my confusion. Yeah, they sound identical. <laughs> wow. Mercy, mercy me. All things ain't what they used to be. Ooh, good question, Marv. Question mark. <laughs> Whoa! So, but anyway, my point being, like, mm. shouldn't that song be about love? Doesn't it make it a little more... Uh, shouldn't we love our planet? Oh, I oh, fucking got it! Earth snaps! <laughs> Uh, Paul of Tompkins is here, and yeah. we are we are outside. Uh, we are in my backyard. You, uh, let me explain what you're listening to. <laughs> Every year, 
we count down the uh, uh, top choices from the listener votes of the episodes of Comedy Bang Bang that occurred in occur in the previous year. <laughs> The listeners vote for them. Uh, we count them down from an uh, indeterminate number. And Paul F. Tompkins and I, uh, Paul F. Tompkins is a frequent guest and collaborator on yeah, this that's show. True. I'm a collaborator. Uh, he uh, Sh- Shave my head. <laughs> <laughs> he comes by and we uh, listen to these clips and we count them down every year. And uh, normally we do this in the studio, but uh, due to... Um, circumstances uh, occur in in the world this year uh we needed to do it outside we needed to do it socially distanced we are about 20 feet away interesting you didn't say circumstances beyond our control uh i had nothing to do with this now here's where i have a little confession to make okay (laughs) i started covid (laughs) (laughs) you you started it back in 2001 i am responsible for the novel coronavirus covid19 sure I didn't mean to do it, but I'm also not ashamed of it. <laughs> and you're not sorry about it. Like, it, it turned out... I'm not even sorry, not sorry. I'm just not sorry. <laughs> By the way, Paul, if you ever need to move any of these umbrellas to give you more shade, I, I guess I set them up for the time that we were starting, and the sun moves. I don't know if you know how this, uh, the Earth uh, uh, revolves around the sun. No. What? Uh, a great big ball of fire in the sky. You, you ever Goodness see that? Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> you created rock and roll. <laughs> um, in any case, we are back uh, in my backyard this year. Uh, Gotta get back in yard. Twenty feet away from each other, we are. Uh, we have not touched uh, like we normally do we're before almost, we start. We're almost four Scott Ackermans apart. That's right. Well, that would be thirty-two feet, would it not? Do you think I'm four? I bet if I, li- I bet I'm, th- I bet we're three away. We're like twenty feet. Oh, because you're over six feet tall. E- oh, how many would be four? Oh, yeah, yeah it would be... T- Six times four is 24, right? Yeah, you're right. Okay, Jesus. 24. Oh, my math skills. Would, so about 25. Yeah, we're about we're about three and a half of me, maybe three. <laughs> uh, and um, this on this episode, we are going to be counting down numbers 16 through 13. Can you fucking imagine? We are going to be hearing four episodes on this, and then... Why, can I ask? Sure. Why 16? Is it is it to the make it like an equal... Four over four episodes? Uh, when I'm pulling the clips... Because four times four is 16. Right. <laughs> when I'm pulling the clips, I take a look at the whole show in general and figure out uh, what has a lot of variety right. in, in the clips. and right. I, Diversity hires. And I then... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and then I uh, I also... If, if some episodes have really short clips, I can fit more into uh, the, the countdown. So I don't know how many we've done in the previous years, but sometimes it's been 12. Can the episode really be that... 13. Can the episode really be that good if the clip is short? That, that's a good question, but sometimes a short clip is really all you need because that's the part everyone remembers. Then the it. rest of the episode is shit. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it get in this here? Is, now we're talking math skills. <laughs> I, of course, uh, and our producer, Kevin Bartlett, are the only ones who, uh, and I guess July as well. Four times seven. Four, yeah, 28. Yes. Uh, our producer, uh, not producer July, but our, our, uh, collaborator July. What is July? Shadowy figure. <laughs> I don't know. I've never known what he does and I never will know. Well, he, for years now, a little, uh, uh, top of sometimes show. Sometimes he's shout on out. an email thread. Sometimes he's not. <laughs> top of show shout out to July. July for T-O-S-S-O. years now has listened to almost every episode that I think the entire network pull, puts out. And writes the descriptions and be. comes up with the title. Yeah, that can't be. he did it for the entire network for a while. Maybe now he only does it for certain shows, but uh, he's uh, 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 definitely a. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm searching for a word. A, a part of the show, a uh, 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 important part of the show. I was going to say we can't do it without him. What is that word that I'm searching for? Invaluable. Invaluable. That word, I tell you. Why make it? Oh, these words. Why not these just words. valuable words? <laughs> Carpet? It's not a car. It's not a pet. Words. Oh remember that? no, I do not remember <laughs> that. that. Was, I believe Bob Odenkirk's uh, oh. imitation of George Carlin. Oh, thank God. Okay. Or maybe it was Rick Moranis's imitation of George Carlin. He, uh, <laughs> either one. Rick Moranis is so funny. He's so good. He was so funny until that guy hit him, and it's all gone. <laughs> I didn't like that that guy hit him. <laughs> I know. Well, I guess we all get hit. <laughs> what do we? <laughs> sure. I don't like this. Turn, not all of us on turn camera. Of events. Can you name a human being who was never hit? Who's never been struck. Yes. Man, I don't know. I mean, some people are liars. 
That's true. So they're what? They're lying about being hit? Or no, they're they lying should about get not- hit. Oh, they should. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was using process of elimination. <laughs> okay. So you're thinking of all the people who should get hit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Richard Spencer. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Famously. Uh, Man, those videos of him were the uh, Phil Collins song played. I, <laughs> so fun. It was so good. I would love to see those, you know, those kids who listen to songs they've never heard before. I would love yes. The the one time the first time they ever listened to in the air tonight, if it was attached to that video, <laughs> I think it would be great. <laughs> Cause they would get a double treat. Did you ever see the one somebody uh did it? They sent the music to um this deer that is stumbling through a backyard playground. <laughs> no. It's because the noises that the deer makes tripping over this plastic stuff sounds very close to that. That drum breakdown. So of, they use of, the actual in the air tonight. Yeah. So they use the actual uh, oh, in the air tonight yeah. up until the drum break, and then it's this deer. I've seen other videos like that, like the deer one you're saying, where they use the drum break of yes. in the air tonight, where it's it, like it works every time. One of the best I dump, drum seen, breaks of all time. One of the best DBs of eight. I can't think of an. Well, of course. Well, this isn't a break. It starts the song, but of course, be my uh, little baby has one of the most famous drum openings of all time. Doom, doom, doom. I don't believe you're thinking of sexual healing. <laughs> that now that song should have been about the ecology. <laughs> like if you're gonna pick a song to be about the ecology, be pick my baby? sexual healing. Oh, sexual healing. Yeah. Well, like if we all have sex, we'll heal the <laughs> we'll globe. We'll heal the earth. Yeah. <laughs> because that way we're shot. not driving around in our cars unless Ooh, you're getting a little roadhead. <laughs> well, like night moves. <laughs> Wait, does he talk about roadhead? He's trying to make moves? the front page driving news. <laughs> You think that's the only thing that could happen to put you on the front page of the drive-in news? They're fucking in a car. Come on. They go to the drive-in and they fuck in the car. Sure, but I mean... <laughs> they go, cause Scott, don't be naive. So every they single the day when, the, when the, the drive-in news comes out, the front page is someone fucked in a car? Extra, extra! <laughs> car fucker, Scott! <laughs> <laughs> Would they have to be caught for it? Otherwise, there's well, no that's, evidence? that's how it's news. All news is somebody being caught. <laughs> <laughs> so the people who get away with it... Yes. They're not news. They don't want to end up in the headlines. No. I understand. Yeah. Uh, So we're going to be listening to uh, 16 through 13 uh, today. (laughs) I don't know about we. (laughs) You got a mouse in your pocket? (laughs) And then uh, on Thursday, part two will come out, and that will be 12 through nine. And then uh, a week from today, Monday, we will hear eight through five. And then a week from Thursday on New Year's Eve, we will hear the top four. And these are all voted on by you, the listeners, and uh, this was a great year. We have some great clips. You are going to want to stick around and listen to all of these uh, inordinately long episodes. Here's what I like is that everyone gets to vote, and then Scott picks the ones that he thinks are best. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Come on. That only happened once. (laughs) And there was one year where you got in there and started gaming the system and started uh, not only voting for I yourself. I but almost did it again this year. Really? What, yeah. we, before we even get to any of these clips, do you remember what one of your favorite episodes to perform in was this year? Oh, Jesus. But what would you have asked uh, people to vote for if you can, if, if, if you would have voted uh, yourself into this countdown? Man, I honestly don't. This was such this a, year's been a blur, has this it not? This year's been a blur. Amazingly, though, uh, this has been, uh, and there were a lot of challenges this year, and we'll talk about those a little later. But uh, this We is, will talk about the challenges. We, this has been one of, we'll talk about the Road Rules Challenge. <laughs> this is going to be the reality show challenge. We will show. not talk about the real world. We will eventually turn into Hollywood Handbook. <laughs> um, <laughs> the reality reality show show <laughs> but uh uh this has been one of the comedically i think one of the better years for comedy bang bang it's been uh I e- disagree even though they're hmm, interesting <laughs> i don't know why you're here <laughs> <laughs> even though there have been a lot of challenges uh this has here. been a uh a listening back to all of the clips as i was compiling them uh this is uh, a lot of good stuff this year and a lot of stuff that was not voted in that was really good and uh, uh, things in episodes that we don't even have – great stuff in episodes that we don't even have time to listen to the clips for. So uh, this this is a really good year, and I think people are really going to enjoy it. And, uh, uh, and Paul, if you had to guess out of the top 16, how many episodes do you think you are featured in? Twelve. 
<laughs> You're so confident. I that. honestly, I don't remember how many episodes I even did this year. I don't either. I feel like in normal times, I would average like one a month. Yeah, one a month. So you'd be yeah. in about 12, including our tours. Uh, not, inclu- yeah. not including our tours. Not including those because that because wouldn't be included, wouldn't of course. Be included. Um, but yeah, you're in about, I think you did about te- between 10 and 12 this did year. Did I really? Yeah, I think you did. Wow. Yeah. I, I should look. But uh, during one of the breaks, I'll take a look and, and see how many that you were actually in and how many you ended up in. And we'll see what your uh, hits to misses ratio is. Uh, misses. I mean, misters to misses. <laughs> <laughs> Dicks to bitches. <laughs> All right, dick bitch. You ready to do this? <laughs> yeah, dick bitch. All right, we are going to start the countdown now, and this is uh, final episode. This is final. <laughs> this is my final answer. We're going to start. Uh, this is the episode that you voted on. Your votes. This is your episode. You, you did it. <laughs> I cannot be blamed for this. This is your episode number sixteen. Number one six. All right, episode 16. Uh, This is episode, uh, what I usually do is I usually say the number and I say the date and try to see if Paul can uh, remember what it is. (laughs) And And this year, you never can. I never can. And this year, it'll be impossible because you don't even remember doing the show. It was all one long date. It was Uh, (laughs) me sitting in that same chair, (laughs) (laughs) looking at my computer screen. But then again. That was 2020. Then again, in other years, we're sitting in just the studio doing the same thing. So. True, but not always same seats. Yep, that's true. Uh, <laughs> this is episode 672. Ah, uh, yes. 672, and this occurred on September 7th, a.k.a. Labor Day. Okay, no idea from Paul. And this is an episode <laughs> called Busy Burgies. Here we go. Busy okay. Burgies. And Paul, would now it surprise you to know, know that you are in this episode? Scott, it would not surprise me because that title does ring more than a bell. <laughs> well, as we established last week, a bell is just a cup until it's struck. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that you're drinking out of this uh, cup because uh, this it's was a great episode. A bell. <laughs> This uh, this episode features the performers. Uh, first of all, we have- a cup is just a bell until it's turned upside down. <laughs> that you like it? <laughs> Wait, you couldn't just turn a regular cup into a bell just by turning it upside down because you can't hit like a plastic cup and have it be a bell. It's a cup. It's a cup until you it's hit it. It's always a cup until you hit it. Then it's a bell. It can't be a bell because it will not have a like a dinging sound. Exactly. I don't think you're making the point that you think. No, you're that expression is ridiculous. A bell is just a cup until it's struck. A cup is just a what is it? A bell is just a cup until it's struck. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. No one's drinking out of a goddamn bell. <laughs> although, How do you know? Although I might start. It has a stem. It does. It has a. It's, it's actually. If you take out that little dongle dinger in the center, what is that? The thing clapper. The cl- if you take out the clap clapper, off. On, <laughs> clap off. Clap off. Clap on. Clap, clap off. off. The clapper. Oh, such a good commercial. Such Remember good when we song. used to talk about commercials on this show? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about commercials a lot. <laughs> Until uh, uh, people but started. But I think, here's what I think, that you could turn a bell upside down, and if you were drinking something that's not clear, like the chocolate milk. Sure. Uh, or wine. Um, I like you, how chocolate milk is the first drink that you can think of. Well, here's why. Because then the clapper slowly reveals itself. It's fun. Like a child's, oh, like a child's cup, almost like an olive in a martini. You're trying to get down to you, like you're. Well, you're, no, you can see the olive. <laughs> sure, but I guess what I mean is, is that you're just enduring the martini until you can finally eat that olive. Well, I'm not going to eat that clapper. It's going to break my teeth off. What about the worm and tequila? What about it? Did you ever see the movie Urban Cowboy? Uh, you know what? I just bought it uh, because they put out a new restoration of it uh, because I'd never seen it, and uh, I was I, I saw that you did a, uh, did a watch, a watch along. along. Yes, my wife Janie and I. I don't think the first time I watch it, I want to put on the watch along. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. <laughs> Although we watched it for the first time <laughs> doing a watch along, I guess. But it would be kind of. Then I thought about it, it would be just like going over to your house and doesn't that sound it. fun? It does sound fun. Yeah. I haven't been to your house in uh, over a year at this point. I know. Now I've turned you around on it. But in, in the movie, uh, just you, this is a spoiler. Do you want to uh, hear it? I mean, is it a plot spoiler? It's not a plot or spoiler. It's, is it one of the best parts? No. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Scott Glenn Ooh. eats a tequila worm. Whoa, yeah. what a spoiler. I wish I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he just like takes it out of the tequila and That's puts it on a plate? That's all. With yeah, a, with a fork. Heard for, like the <laughs> Mickey's Christmas Carol. He slices it real thin. <laughs> 
What do they eat in a Mickey's Christmas Carol? I think a bean. I think uh, have to, a bean, yeah. I've true. never seen it, but I, I feel like I've seen a clip You've of it. You've never seen it? Interesting. No, I've never seen it. I used to watch that every year. Uh, around, Mickey's Christmas Right Carol? around this time of year. Mickey's Christmas Carol. <laughs> yeah. I used to watch that every year in March. <laughs> <laughs> um. Th- this episode, uh, number 16, of course, Busy Burgies, has uh, the performers Busy Phillips, uh, our old friend from, uh, you've worked with her for many years in uh, Thrilling Adventure Hour. That's correct. You know her from, uh, she was formerly on Freaks and Geeks and mm-hmm. Dawson's Creek and Cougarton. Cougarton. And frequent spontaneous nation guest, very first guest and very last right. guest we had. And uh, apparently there was a lot of unresolved issues between us that we uh, settled on uh, the episode of uh, Are You Talking uh, Talking Heads to My Talking Head, which came out uh, last week. So uh, oh. apparently I said something to her backstage at a thrilling adventure that she uh, uh, took offense to. Interesting. Not offense necessarily, but she it I hurt her feelings. I, I I think it what, insulted her. I, I was apologizing, <laughs> uh, and during the break of our uh, the episode that we taped, I was also apologizing, and uh, I think she she brought it up in order to highlight how, uh, how just like insecurities back in those days of like anything anyone could say to you would sort of set you off into a like oh wait where's my place in it? because basically what it was was uh, I was doing uh, the. The interstitials on IFC that they gave me in order to test me out to see if I could get a, I could host. I a remember talk show. that you yes, were on yes, those. Yes, that's right. And uh, I was mentioning <laughs> I have that a great picture from that shoot, really hanging in my home of you and I strangling each other. Oh yes, I remember that. Yes. <laughs> we're smiling, we're smiling, we're smiling. Big smiles on our faces, strangling each right. other. Right. Uh, <laughs> and and I think I was mentioning those to her of she asked what i was up to and i mentioned oh yeah well i'm doing these for ifc and we're having a lot of the stars from uh uh, shows that they that they have in syndication on their like shows like you know larry sanders show and freaks and geeks and she was like well i was on freaks and geeks why aren't you talking to me about on it and i think what in my memory i now realize that i at the time, I had to watch so many episodes of television in order to, because I hadn't, I'd never seen Freaks and Geeks, I'd mm-hmm. never seen Larry, uh, all of the Larry Sanders show. I had to watch all of them in about three weeks straight. Jesus, in order to prep for this. I remember we went. Can to, I say this? No, you didn't. <laughs> I know <laughs> that was a. But I didn't mistake. know. I didn't know anything about Freaks and Geeks. I'd never right. watched any of them, and so and I believe Judd and Paul Feig were both on, and Seth Rogen. Yeah. And so I, 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 I think during the break, Busy and I, what I established was Busy. I think when I brought that up, I didn't even know you were on Freaks and Geeks, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I hadn't even watched it yet. Right. And I, and then I felt bad and started saying like, "Oh no, uh, yeah, we'll get you on." Or and she, she was like, "But wait, shouldn't I be on anyway?" So mm-hmm. that and she, she brought it up on the show. Uh, this last week, why didn't she bring it up on this episode, Busy Burgies? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe. Maybe we did this episode, Busy Burgies, which came out uh, in September, and we just taped this uh, uh, Talking Heads episode uh, at the end of November, I believe. And maybe she'd been thinking about it because uh, that brought it up in her mind ever since then. I see. In any case, we hashed it out. We're the best of friends again. and uh, <laughs> I'm glad that has been restored. <laughs> <laughs> We're best friends now. <laughs> Best friends who just got each other's emails. Um, and uh, in any case, yeah, she was on the show. Was she promoting something? I don't recall. Well, she's got a new podcast, relatively it was new the podcast. podcast. Yes, yes, yes. She was promoting the podcast. So she uh, is doing her best. Yes. So she was on to promote uh, her podcast. And uh, we also have uh, Ego Wodum is on the show. Who yes. People will know from Saturday Night Live. They should. She is currently on the cast and just uh, scored big uh, a week ago uh, with her uh, Dion Warwick uh, talk show. Uh, very funny sketch. Uh, and uh, the clip. So she is she is playing. OK, let, by the way, this is the only these are the only episodes. If you listen to Comedy Bang Bang just on any normal week, uh, you will not hear the behind the scenes aspect. No, of you're it. forbidden. It's none of your business. <laughs> That's right. We want you to just remain confused as you listen to it. But what happens on the show is uh, I usually talk to uh, uh, one person, one or two people as themselves, which in this case would be Busy Phillips. Correct. She is uh, herself a celebrity, and we're talking about her projects. Correct. And then we have other guests who come on who are comedians who are playing fake people. 
So, uh, every episode, and we don't talk about this when you listen to the show. Uh, we just introduce these people as the people that they're playing. And uh, then during the plugs, they usually uh, mention the, their own name and what they're plugging. But during yes. the show, uh, so this this leads to a lot of people thinking... A clever bit of subterfuge. This leads to a lot of people thinking that we actually have these uh, weirdos are real people and that they're on the show. Sometimes, uh, in a lot of cases, Paul, you've played celebrities that exist. Uh, yes. You've played... Uh, uh, the one that I'm thinking of is Werner Herzog, who mm-hmm. a lot of people thought, Werner Herzog is funny. He's on Comedy Bang yeah. Bang every week. And uh, that was you, of course, doing it. It was me the whole time. <laughs> the whole time? Yes. Uh, there was one episode where it was Werner Herzog. <laughs> yes, we don't want to say which one that You'll was. You'll never see if you can pick it out. <laughs> he was doing your impression of him. Yeah, that's the right. He did time. a great job. <laughs> so, in any case, in this episode, Ego is playing uh, the CEO of Red Lobster, Trisha Seawater. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Correct. Uh, which she said was a name uh, thought up by Carl Tart, uh, she told us during mm-hmm. the break. Um, and uh, uh, you'll hear her and Busy chime in during this clip. Uh, but the two people that uh, uh, are going to be prominently featured in this clip are yourself, Paul F. Tompkins, mm. and Dan Lippert. Yes. Now, do you remember what happened in this show? Yes, I do. Uh, and should I give the, the backstory? Yes, all the backstory. Um, I, I I can start if you want, and then and because I think I I have even further backstory if you if you like. Let me let me tell it from I go what further, I know. Okay, I do an episode of this show, Comedy Bang Bang. <laughs> sure. Do you want to talk about exactly what it is and how there's fake people? And- yes. Uh, what it is is there's a real celebrity, then <laughs> somebody a comedian playing a fake person, and, and there's credits at the end where they say, uh, thank you to our. Our guest, celebrity, and so and so as the fake person. <laughs> no, we don't do that actually. And I'm the star. And uh, <laughs> no, no, that's also not. I mean, some would. Say. So here's the thing: I I do this episode, and I I am trying to think of a character to do, and I think, oh, I could do the brother. I could do a, a relative of one of my existing characters. You used to, or maybe still do. You used to do an impression of uh, Sully Sullenberger. Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger, the hero of the Hudson. And and why did you want Famous to do airline pilot. the brother? Is it because you're trying to phase out doing real people in, in your impressions? Yeah, or? it was like how everyone I do an impression of is elderly. <laughs> <laughs> and they end up passing away. And you can't do so, them anymore. So what if <laughs> uh, what if I were to do an impression of some, just make up somebody? And have it be adjacent, you know, that could be right. kind of fun. And adjacent I thought... Adjacent I beg your pardon? I said adjacent Manzoukas. Adjacent Manzoukas. <laughs> if I did, uh, you know, I, I so if I'm doing Sully, what if I do his brother? And there's a rivalry there, and he's the opposite of Sully. He he has a different nickname that's related to his name. Um, he has a different occupation, you know, all this. But he sounds basically the same. Although I did try to pitch it a little higher Mm. than the Sully voice that I do, but I'm sure it, it, it like within seconds it dropped <laughs> right, right it down. probably dropped right down. Um, and so we do it and it's a lot of fun. And then immediately afterwards, I get, um, I get not messages. immediately, but well, after the episode drops, uh, no, no, actually it was, uh, let me, uh, so let me cut in, uh, mm, and, okay. and tell you about the, tell me when I heard about, tell it. me a, a, of, of my backstory. Mm. Uh, so, a lot of times I don't listen to the episodes back. Now, that has not been the case uh, since we've started here in quarantine because now I need to listen to all of the episodes back in order to – because doing the show on Zoom is inherently a little awkward sometimes. And so I need to listen back to cut out like any weird awkwardness. Like every once in a while there will be one performer who is hearing everything five seconds after – <laughs> because their internet is slower. <laughs> and so we need to like sort of work out uh, that. And Kevin, our producer Kevin, has been uh, really good about that this year, uh, uh, cutting out all, all of the awkwardness before it gets to me. But um, a lot of times before the pandemic started, I wouldn't listen to the episodes back. They would just drop and I would immediately forget them as soon as we uh, finished the actual episode. Mm-hmm. So... About a little over a year ago, or maybe a year ago right now, uh, the comedian Dan Lippert, who is in the um, – he's a, a good uh, uh, improviser and comedian on his own, but he's also he's part of the uh, – he, he's great when he's with Big Grande. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he came on the show and he did a character uh, called uh, Bergie Sullenberger, mm -hmm. who was a bus driver mm -hmm. who crashed into a bunch of people or something like that. I can't mm -hmm. recall. He did it. It was very funny. But I, of course, forgot about it immediately. So when you came on the show and you pitched, hey, I want to do uh, Bergie Sullenberger, a bus driver, I thought, oh, that's a funny idea. Now, people have to know, we, we have to pitch to Scott what our ideas are. <laughs> no, when I say pitch, <laughs> you just told me how to be introduced. <laughs> There's a, a lengthy audition process. <laughs> it's like a chorus line where I'm in the back. I'm like Michael Douglas. That's right. Dance, um, dance 10 looks three. <laughs> how are your tits and ass, by the way? <laughs> Not great. <laughs> So we did the episode, and I did not remember Dan doing the previous episode, and so I totally forgot about it. And we did it probably on a Tuesday before it was going to come out the next Monday. And then uh, the aforementioned July, who listens to all of the episodes back and retains a lot of knowledge about the previous episodes, he, on Sunday, usually the episodes are dropped at 9 p.m., but they need to be uploaded at 5, right? At right. 4.45, I get a text from Kevin saying, by the way, July wanted to mention that Dan Lippert also did Bergie Sullenberger on the show uh, uh, about six months earlier. And I said, oh, no. Uh, and there, and it literally was dropping in 15 minutes, and there was nothing to do about it. And I texted you Sunday night and was like, mm -hmm. hey, man, uh, that character you did, I guess Dan Lippert did it as well. And you wrote, oh, no, can we cancel the episode or something like that? I think that you I think you were saying maybe we shouldn't put it out. And I was like, no, it's like, you know, the, the, the deadline is like mm -hmm. in five minutes. And then uh, uh, we wrote to Dan with you uh, as well on a on an email thread where uh, you apologized and and said how it happened and Dan thought it was really funny and we thought that the only thing really to do was to do an episode where both Burgies came together uh, and we're but on. May I may yeah. I just say this? I had listened to that episode right that Dan did. I definitely had listened to it. Right. And I also completely forgot right. <laughs> that he did that. And it was we're not saying that both of us forgot because it was not memorable. No. It was very funny. It's just when you listen to so much stuff or when you perform so much stuff, yeah. you can immediately forget it. So was there some sort of un or subconscious plagiarism going on, do you think? Or was it because it's really easy to get to maybe Bergie Sullenberger yeah, absolutely. from where you're from where you started. Yes. I, I there there may have been, but it seems weird that it would be so long that it <laughs> that it would be so long afterwards. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like that's what's so strange that's, about that, it. To that's me. this is where I think it was just purely parallel thought is like you got to it from wanting to do your Sully Sullenberger character, yes. but without doing the real guy. Yes. And the first, it's just so, the, the, the awesome coincidence of it is, is that you both came up with the name Bergie. Yes. <laughs> taking the and other bus half. Driver. And yeah. bus driver. Taking the other half of his name, which is yeah. so easy to do. Uh, but you both came up with it. It's so funny. So I don't think it was plagiarism. I just think it no, was. No, I don't think it was plagiarism either. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I don't think it was conscious plagiarism. <laughs> I think it was a, a George Harrison, my sweet lord situation. Yes, that's what I think too. That I was trying, I was trying to write my sweet with, lord. I was trying to write my sweet lord, <laughs> and I accidentally wrote he's so fine. <laughs> um, and now they're both mad at me. <laughs> um, yeah, I was tr in trying to come at this from a different angle. I ended up doing somebody else's angle <laughs> right but it does but like, it's also the first thought angle when you're trying to do exactly. a, a those, silly i feel like those two things are very once you once you arrive at sibling rivalry right like okay sully's got a brother who, who who's jealous doesn't like him. what's what's like the opposite of everything right <laughs> and it's like i love the idea though that bus driver is definitely the opposite of airline pilot <laughs> <laughs> well, the first episode that Dan did was funny. Uh, you should go back and listen to that. The first episode that Paul did was funny. You should go back to listen to that. But this is the one where the two Burgies come together. <laughs> uh, this is Busy Burgies. This is your episode 16. Number one, six. Well, we need to get to our next guest. He is a bus driver. And, oh, he's been on the show before. He was on uh, uh, about a month ago. A uh, very interesting guy. Please welcome back to the show, Charlie Burgie Sullenberger. 
Scott, thank you for having me back so soon. I appreciate it. Uh, My pleasure. It's, it's so good it's, to see you. It's good to see you as well. Uh, I apologize if uh, our last uh, meeting was a bit contentious. Uh, it was. I know that I was accused many times of uh, getting quite heated, and yet my voice uh, remains the same uh, the entire time. So I don't know how people are able to determine that I'm getting heated. It uh, wasn't necessarily the uh, volume of your voice as much as the word choice that you were using. This is, again, the terrible, specious argument that was used the first time. See, terrible uh, and specious. Those are two words that popped out. To well, me it's just like, it's just an argument to me like you're getting heated. It's ju- I'm, I'm not getting heated. As you can see, the tone of my voice has not changed. It's not all I'm saying, nothing to do with the tone. All of your voice. I'm saying, it's I mean, purely, if I were getting heated, I think the tone of my voice would change. And I think only a, a, a moron would say that I was getting heated if they were yeah, listening again, to the, the using tone of my words voice. like moron. Just a stupid idiot would. See, now the tone of your of voice is, is raising. I don't I don't think that you it have is. been I on think this show for 60 seconds and already. You're starting your shit. I th- I'm not starting any shit. I think uh, only a stupid person would accuse me of doing okay, so because the tone go. of my voice has not changed. Busy, are you hearing this? This is, this is what I, this is a problem I had with our guest last time. I mean, it doesn't sound like his voice tone is changing to me at all. Thank you very much. Why is no one on my side on this show? Please go back to reading your magazine. There is there is no. There is no change in my voice. I am not getting heated. Is that a colloquialism? I don't know. Please go back to reading your magazine. It is. It is. It's a thing we say in the, in the bus driving trade. Uh, also, oh, you a are bus, a bus driver. I'm no, I'm a bus pilot. Okay, because last time you, you were on the show about a month ago, and we found out you, right. you consider yourself to be a pilot. Uh, I don't you, consider myself to be a pilot. I am a pilot. I have a Class J license to prove it. <laughs> uh, I am a bus pilot. Hey, and, Scott. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Everyone. Hey, Scott. How's it going? What in uh, the... Who hi, in who the, are, who, uh, Ber- uh, Hey, Scott. It's, it's Bergie. Sorry I'm late. I was having trouble with the Zoom. I'm sorry. Uh, your name uh, is also Bergie? Yeah, I'm uh, Bergie Solenberger. Uh, sir, I don't do believe... Bergie bang, bang. Wait a minute. This is this is crazy. Uh, he, he, b- b- my name is Bergie Sullenberger. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, I, I'm sorry. Let me let me unpack this for a second. I I put out a request for my my uh, a booking person to get Bergie Sullenberger on the show because you were on a month ago, Bergie. And here I am. Yes. And no, I was on in November. That yeah, I sort of remember that now. You were I was on, on in the November. podcast in November with Mitra Drahari. Joel Kim Booster and a uh, a toe for the boogie border. Right. Yeah, I remember. I don't know why I didn't remember that when you were on the show a month ago, Bergie. But you, your name is Bergie Sullenberger, and you are also the yes, brother. Yes, my name to- is Bergie Sullenberger. No, I'm talking to this Bergie over here. You are also the brother to Sully. Sullenberger. No, yeah. I'm the brother to Sully. Okay, Sullenberger. you know I don't so, want to jump. I don't want to uh, get into anything here with these two two people. But one of them sounds like a narc. Um, which one? Of which, them does, which one? <laughs> one of them does sound. Yeah, I would say like a narc. Um, I would uh, say uh, the the first one who was talking sounds like an absolute yeah, narc. He's he's got a yeah. narc kind of. I don't know why voice. you would accuse me of sounding narc, like a narc. The tone narc of my vibes. voice has not changed the entire you've time. You've got narc speaking. vibes. It's nothing no, to I'm, do with the tone of your voice. <laughs> it's your word, <laughs> and maybe it is the tone of your voice because that flat de-escalation voice that most cops use. That's the yeah. one you're using. Yes, cops are very skilled at de-escalation, and uh, they are <laughs> That's constantly me. using those flat voices all the time. <laughs> video after video of cops <laughs> calmly de-escalating a situation. <laughs> well, oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, here's the situation. I am now remembering that that Bergy number two, the second Bergy to come on, you were on the show in November. November, November. And then I the forgot that you, you were on... And then Bergie number one, you were on about a month ago, and I didn't Bergie, remember Bergie the. Prime. Bergie I, Prime. <laughs> I didn't remember uh-huh. Earth Two, Bergie. <laughs> the, okay. Although I don't know why he would get Earth Two, Bergie, and you would get Bergie Prime <laughs> when you're the second one to appear. I mean, this is a lot like, I guess, the Flash of Earth One appearing after Golden Age Flash, and he's relegated to Earth Two. Anyway, we're getting in the weeds about this, but um, I don't what, want to discuss the Speed Force, uh, Scott. I I. 
I don't know what's going on here. This gentleman, uh, he calls himself uh, by my name. We we don't look anything alike. He claims to be well, no, my we brother's look exactly brother. The same. I think we could agree we do look exactly the same. So there's we, something going on. We there. cannot agree. I'm very tall. Uh, okay. And I, I mean, I, I don't know if you can tell looking at me, but I'm probably about your height. I mean, we're in different rooms right now, but yeah. we both got the same chiseled jaw. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you're seeing. I look, I look remarkably like my brother, Sully Sullenberger. Sully Sullenberger, my brother. Uh, look, Which of you is telling the truth here? <laughs> I know. It looks, you both uh, claim to be the brother of, of hero pilot, plane pilot, I guess I should distinguish, Sully Sullenberger, who- Not uh, a hero. Not a hero. Who, who on, on that fateful day, landed on the Hudson, saving all those souls on board. Yes, he, he, staged, he staged an accident. He threw a dead goose into a- into an engine and uh, forced a uh, a water landing so he could look like a hero. He'd been planning it since we were kids. I know what's happening here, Scott. I know exactly what's happening here. Well, what's happening? Please explain it to me because I have no clue. Space time rift. It's a space oh, no. time rift. Things have been a little odd for me the past few months. Uh, I going to be honest. I tried to bring back um, some dead people. With a time machine. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Who? Let me ask you, the, the other Bergie, it, were they souls that were lost on a bus? <laughs> in a bus yes, crash? Yes, it was the 81 souls I lost when I drove a bus into the Hudson River while watching the movie Sully. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot that about your first appearance. Every bus driver knows that there is a risk of a rift in the space-time continuum. We've all lost souls. But we... And wait, you every must, bus pilot has had someone die on board? Every Every bus pilot has, I don't think has had would feel safe going on a bus anymore if that were the case. Well, well I'm Scott, sorry to tell you. When's the last time you went I, on a bus? Scott, you're rich. Please. <laughs> I went on a subway back in March. That's subway. not a bus, Scott. It's, it's a bus, bus under the ground. Subway is it, that's absolutely it's, it's a train under the ground. And it's I went a to train. a subway sandwich shop. I used prob to probably okay. in 2019. Well, I used to to Stop <laughs> talking about subways. Because, because Scott was looking for Jared. He was trying to get Jared's autograph. <laughs> okay, I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to get Jared's autograph. I forgot Scott, that you were a Jared. I do, I do see Scott. He always has a huge pair of pants in his trunk in case he runs into Jared. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> to, so he can see to if it's the real Jared. To he conceal holds, my he holds the pants. He holds the pants. <laughs> it's a dual purpose. <laughs> well, okay. So you try. You 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 just hold on a second. People. Hold on a yeah, second, sorry, Scott. Sorry, Mark, my, the tone of my voice has not changed. Um, I want you to understand, and this is something that I, I'm sure other Bergie can uh, attest to, and we'll figure out who we are. Um, every bus you've ridden on, uh, someone has died on that bus. Wow, haunted yeah, bus. Well, they're not haunted. It's just that people <laughs> die on them. <laughs> so you don't think the souls who were lost stick around on these buses? No, you're thinking of a ghost bus, which is uh, much like the Flying Dutchman. There is a uh, <laughs> there is a, a ghost bus that <laughs> which travels that cross country. <laughs> Is that one that only appears at certain times of you know, of the month? That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly certain times of the month, <laughs> and that's so. <laughs> bus pilots often say, "Well, it's that time of the month again." <laughs> <laughs> Number one six. Ah, oh, such a funny clip. The busy burgies. It was really funny. That was fun to do. In fact, I would almost say you both should come back <laughs> together as a team. Can I one. tell you, we almost did that for the uh, the most recent holiday episode. Oh, you did? Okay. But we were so far apart in the lineup, and then I oh. had to go because Lauren Lapkus and I had our improv show that oh, night. Oh, right. Okay. Um, and so we could not do it. What did da I don't know what Dan ended up doing. Dan ended up doing... What did he do? <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is one I have not listened back to yet, <laughs> and I've totally forgotten it. Uh, but he did something really funny yeah. and uh uh i don't recall what it is that was an interesting one in that because of the the nature of doing it over zoom um a lot of people left after the the first after half, the break which actually yeah. made it more controllable it had to have been <laughs> it was almost like doing two separate episodes in a way yeah. uh because a bunch of you left uh, halfway through and then a bunch of different people came in, as opposed yeah. to the year before where everyone stayed the entire yes. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which on Zoom is really tough to do. All right, we need to take a break. When we come back, though, we will have episode 15, and this is really exciting. Paul, any guesses? <laughs> I think this is going to be one for the books. <laughs> it certainly is. All right, when those books come back, 
We will have episode 15. We'll be right back with more of the best of Comedy Bang Bang 2020 after this. I'm Kevin Hart, and you don't want to miss my new show, Inside Jokes, where I have the opportunity to talk to comedians in ways that I've never been able to talk to them before. Why? Well, because I believe that we're the most interesting people on the planet. Intimate conversations are not the way that you think it. I'm not talking about nasty talk. I'm talking about real talk, raw talk with great dialogue. Inside Jokes is about jumping into the minds of our amazing comedians. Inside Jokes is available now on Stitcher. Just tap the image on your screen and add it to your favorites. (laughs) Comedy Bang Bang, we are back. Best of 2020 part one. And Paul F. Tompkins is here with me, and we are in the my backyard. books are back, baby. Uh, Paul adjusted the umbrella uh, during the break. I had to adjust the umbrella. And now he is completely in the shade other than uh, his haunches. I've got it made in the shade. My haunch is <laughs> are you, enjoying are you a haunch a sunshine. <laughs> um, and uh, we're in the backyard. There's no other way around it. You know what I mean? I mean... Uh, Do you know what I mean by Backyard. All the, the neighbor. I, I will say that when we were here uh, last time, because we tape uh, our uh, other podcast, Freedom, here, uh, there were uh, people watching us <laughs> from that house. No, really. And uh, I kept getting distracted by it. But uh, but you didn't tell us because you didn't want us to be distracted. Exactly. Yes. But, but you also uh, didn't want to chase them away. That's right. But never not you funny freak. style. Uh, 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 because uh, when they tape, uh, there's a podcast, Never Not Funny, great podcast with Jimmy Pardo. They still uh, use tape. And uh, when they were taping in their mm-hmm. parking lot, there's a uh, uh, apartment building that overlooks the parking lot that there was a fan, I guess, who was was watching them <laughs> from <laughs> from his porch or his patio. Anyway, but do you think those people watching us were fans? No, think I think they're they neighbors nosy. wondering what the fuck is going on. It was a mystery. Why Mrs. people are shouting. <laughs> and uh, 2020. We're doing it. We're uh, uh, <laughs> getting through it, are we not? We're doing it, and we're getting through it. And right now there is uh, some sort of, uh, I don't know whether it's a single engine plane above us, or uh, I don't think it's a helicopter. Can you see? Uh, oh, it's a little plane. It's a little plane. Uh, Speaking of tattoo. <laughs> the plane. The plane. <laughs> the plane. What, were the, what was the audition process like? <laughs> was it people doing that? I wonder. Just you like don't regular. think Hervé got the offer? Well, what did what you think? He, like Billy Barty was in there? Was it? Well, that's the question. Was it always uh, a little person, or was it just like? Now I know I'm not what you had in mind for this. <laughs> but just let me read, and then you make your decision. All I ask for is a chance. <laughs> that's not bad. Thank you. Uh, I'm not good either, but uh, hey, I mean, man, a, what? what the fudge? You don't do any impressions, and then you—I do impressions. Oh, around the house. Name it. it You got living room balls. (laughs) (laughs) Living room balls. That's from Mister Saturday Night. Oh, it is. (laughs) Oh, Billy Crystal yells at his brother David Paymer. Oh boy, you got living room balls. Yeah, because he's afraid to go out in you know on the stage. But he's going to critique Mister Saturday Night. Mister Saturday Night himself. The only thing I remember from that movie is uh, I remember him constantly saying, see what I did there? And then I remember the year it came out, it didn't get nominated for anything, but Billy Crystal was hosting the Oscars. Mm-hmm. And in his big pre... Uh, I remember this in his song, well. In his song medley, uh, he suddenly went, uh, where he sings the titles of all the, the movies that got nominated, he threw in, Mr. Saturday Night, and everyone applauded like, yeah, you should have gotten nominated for that. Or, yeah, we're humoring you. (laughs) (laughs) Here's what's so funny about that movie is that he did that character on SNL during that that strange, was it one season? It was one season. It was one season. 1985, yeah. Where it was Christopher Guest, Billy Crystal, Martin Short. Harry Shearer. Harry Shearer, Pamela Stevenson, of course. Jim Belushi. Jim Belushi, as my (laughs) my dad used to (laughs) call him. Belushi. Belushi. And oh, Rick, Rich Hall, yeah, Rich Hall, yeah, doing uh, David Byrne, so wild. Yeah. Um, and Sniglets, and he did and Sniglets, <laughs> and, and the rest. And he used to do this up. Billy Crystal used to do this update character, which is an old Catskills comedian, right? And it was like making fun of Catskills comedians, right? And then he was like. I'm going to make a sincere movie about this character. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, what's so weird? It's so strange. 
It was a weird like movie. Like if Martin you- Short was like, Ed Grimley is a tragic figure, and I'm going to make I'm going to make a dramedy <laughs> <Nathan> about her. <laughs> I, I know that. Why do you think I wouldn't know that? We see like him going to law school. Nathan Thurm, famously based on a real person that... Uh, that's right, one of the wardrobe people, right? Yes, that's from, right. And a, yeah. the person who uh, uh, told that story or something uh, got in trouble for it? I can't recall. Anyway, you can look that all up I on the internet. I thought he's told that story. He's told that story, and I think the person who... So there's something about the person who who let it slip that that was a real thing. I can't remember right. exactly what it was, but that person gets in trouble anytime anyone tells that story. <laughs> <laughs> and when Martin Short's book came out, Martin Short's book, a really good book, uh, you can read. Uh, he told that story, and the person got in trouble again. <laughs> but Martin Short never gets in trouble. <laughs> no, Martin Short is blameless. <laughs> he, this guy's in trouble just for saying that's based on you. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, at a Christmas, I, I, don't, I can't remember the. I can't remember the thing but i think i i think maybe i've met that guy anyway in any case oh uh we are counting down the top uh 16 episodes this year of 2020 we already heard number 16 and uh we're out to hear number 15 which is really exciting we're out to hear it we're out to no i said about uh, oh, just I, I i uh probably mumbled it but we're yeah, out maybe to it's hear your it. thick orange county accent <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro I am, of course, from Orange County, uh, and Paul is from Philadelphia, PA, which has been in the news recently. What happened? More bad things? <laughs> no, just, I mean, over the past uh, couple oh, yes. of months. Okay, yes. yes. Okay. Like, God, uh, I, you, under the you, microscope. You scared me for a second. Um, Do you uh, think there was like another 9-11 style thing that might have happened this I morning? Didn't, I didn't think. While you were driving here? <laughs> I, I didn't think quite on those. They blew up the Liberty that, Bell? On that scale. <laughs> they blew the Liberty, the Liberty Bell Cup. in Philly last night. <laughs> Um, to Liberty Cup until it was struck and then it cracked. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's, let's, uh, all right. uh, Terry, no further. Let's get to it. This is your episode 15. Number one, five. All right. Episode 15. Don't you remember a beautiful plan to get all of our singing compadres together to record jingles for this, for oh, this that's, countdown? Did we, did we talk about that last yeah, year? Yeah, we did. I don't, maybe two years ago. I don't, I don't remember. Oh, we got to do that. We're like, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of us that can sing. What if we all got in a, well, we Yeah, can't because I've been now. using these ones I, I downloaded off the internet 12 years ago. Yeah. That only went now. up to 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so wait, how far, how, how, what would we go up to? A hundred? I think. Just to cover our bases? No, no, no one's going <laughs> to, no one's going to do that. But if we went up to, if we went up to 20, I think that would be good. Right. Okay. And you know what? We could do it over Zoom. We could we could pa- we could keep keep passing it on. Somebody starts and then they forward the track and then they add their vocal I to it. How they do it because you know there there's companies that do it. I we've talked about this before. We could be that but company. You you could, would hire this company to 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 sing jingles for your radio station. I don't know how much you would pay them, but it would be like KFI 640 blah blah blah. But <laughs> I wonder how much it costs and and what the process would be for doing all of these like did they have uh, a, a tune that they already going back home <laughs> it's like oh it, fuck li- this. it literally looks like the same plane flying back the other way <laughs> <It might be. laughs> but would they have a tune that they already knew that they would just swap in the details for or would they come up with a new song every single every single thing i think because those things all sound kind of the same i think if you go to that company they have a way of doing it right and it's just like And how many parts is it? Like how many how many parts would we have to do? Is it 30. like three parts probably? <laughs> number it's, num so it's like number one. So, and and then the other part is like number, number one or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Uh, we'll figure it out. We can we'll do, we do as many as five. Five part harmony. That's right. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll definitely do it whenever uh, the, that'll be the first thing we do when the vaccine is administered into our arms. But I'm saying we could do it now. That's true. You know, safely. Safely and, and it, soundly. And it would be a fun project. Do they put the vaccine in your arm, do you know? Or is it your butt? I think it's both. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure that it's the second one where they do something to your butt isn't I just think, the doctor being a weirdo? No, 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 no. Because I've every doctor I've gone to. Um they also spray something in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you have to open them like uh Clock I was going to say Catch-22 for some reason. Like Catch-22. <laughs> <laughs> Unfilmable, as George Clooney found out. Um, all right. Twice unfilmable. This is episode 646. 646. Mm. And this is from 
Let me say this date, and maybe, maybe this will tell you what was Thank going on. Thank you. This Thank is you. from March 23rd. Oh, shit. So it's uh, uh, close to a week after uh, St. Patrick's Day. Sure. So everyone's feeling a certain way. Well, what happened thanks or uh, uh, Thanksgiving, St. Thanks- Patrick's Day this Saint year? Thanksgiving. What happened to St. Patrick's Day? Do you remember? Uh, yes. All the stuff that normally happens. All the stuff that normally happens was was canceled. canceled. Yes, Why? Because of the novel coronavirus. That's COVID-19 right. Nineteen that I created. <laughs> <laughs> so this was uh, put out March twenty third, but it was recorded on March sixteenth. So people were mistakenly doing St. Patrick's Day material that they should not have been doing. <laughs> but it was the very last day that I went anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh the studio the earwolf studios was the very last place that mm-hmm. i went to before uh suddenly everyone started taking this shit serious yeah. i can't remember when tom hanks what is the actual date tom hanks uh came out and said that Do you he think had it. that was the turning point when people were like well if he got it well i th- i think some sports in every man some it, there was there it was like a series of dominoes sports were canceled and then, like an hour later, Fats uh, Domino got it. <laughs> uh, an hour later, Tom Hanks said he had it, and this all happened on one day. Uh, and uh, I don't know what day it was, but I'm looking it up. But that, but I remember that was because I remember we were talking about it. It was March 17th. So it was St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so. Literally, we taped this on March 16th, and we were sort of taking it seriously, I remember, because uh, Sean Diston came in hot. <laughs> of course, he, oh, he always does. But he came wearing plastic gloves. Wow. And we, Because none of us knew how it was transmitted or how to get it. Yeah. So we were like, I don't know. Do we send away? <laughs> what, what do we do? So he came in wearing gloves that disintegrated the entire show. <laughs> 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 uh, and none of us really knew what was going on. And then March, the very next day, March 17th, Tom Hanks said that he had uh, coronavirus. And we were all like, oh, I guess this is really serious. We all need to uh, stay in our homes. And so this was the very last thing I did. So this has a uh, a wonderful uh, uh, sort of uh, reminiscent quality to me of being the last time I ever was anywhere. The last place I was before lockdown? Uh-huh. LAX. <laughs> Doing what? Just I was coming back, out. I was coming back from Vancouver. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you wondering if you should go to Vancouver. Was that part of it? Yes. Or? I was like, yes. should I? Well, it's probably be okay. And then um it got things got right. Things really uh snowballed very quickly that week. Right. And so when I got to Vancouver, I was not shaking hands with people, and people were like, Oh, okay. And yes. then by the end, it was like they were. St- I was on a set, and they were sterilizing pens to right. sign contracts. <laughs> well, I um, I'm looking at my calendar. So on the 14th, I had a meeting at like uh, some restaurant that I was going with uh, a friend of mine, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a, Bill bus- w. a business meeting. Yes, Bill W. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Fritchard, William Bill Fritchard. Uh and I said to everyone, hey, we need to do this over Zoom on the 14th because we shouldn't be, like, going extra places. And half of the participants were like, oh, come on, you're taking this too seriously. And so they all went to the restaurant, and my friend and I Zoomed in to the restaurant. Yeah. So I already was being a little cautious, uh, but I know, like, a few days earlier, I was on the subway, to, <laughs> like, cool up, and I took the subway yeah. to downtown L.A., which is, seems insane knowing what we know now about how it's transmitted. Downtown L.A. In any case, this was uh, a March 16th, and uh, this is an episode called Ninja Nordstrom. Now, we know that Sean Diston's involved. Sean Diston is involved, and he is playing Sprague the Whisperer sure. in this episode. Sprague the Whisperer is a... <laughs> okay, it was a character. He started out as pretty much like a, a send-up of those uh, those guys on Game of Thrones who are the advisors to the... Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> He started as yeah. Who are those characters? They're the they're like the, the guys who get their or whatever, yeah. They get yeah. their balls chopped off, and they're you know the one bald, ga- bald. Oh, the eunuchs. Yeah, the eunuch yeah. who uh, who's bald who gets the bald eunuch. 
So he started as he's, one of those. He's both guys. bald and de bald. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> An interesting conundrum. <laughs> An oxymoron, perhaps. Um, but uh, uh, so he started out as that, and then he, I think, even in his first appearance, like segued into being an agent or a manager. Yeah, it's absolutely in his first appearance. Yeah. <laughs> and to where now he doesn't whisper anymore. I think he started whisper like he started that first he had episode. A, yes, sort he of had whispering. a very stylized way of speaking, and then it's just a vague English accent. <laughs> yes. So and then uh, uh, so so he's been on the show many times, and um, also on the show are uh, Lily Sullivan. Making her first appearance on the countdown. Who? Uh, oh, on the is, countdown. Yes, on the countdown, and uh, she plays uh, the Mister Nordstrom's assistant, <laughs> whose name I believe is Susie. Uh, and uh, then we also have uh, making his first appearance on the show ever, and unfortunately, at this point, the last uh, due to uh, this being the last episode we did in the studio. Uh, Jacob Waisaki, who was very funny on this episode. He's very funny. And he uh, did uh, Griff Hedgley, the diamond guy. He was really funny. <laughs> I really enjoyed having him on the show and yeah. want to have him back. Uh, but due to process that we'll talk about later, or we've had to sort of contain <laughs> and have less people on the show. So uh, the clip we're going to hear is just, though, uh, the first part of the episode when I'm talking to Sprague the Whisperer. And um, this is... Uh, we are talking about a subject matter that seemed to pop up a lot uh, on the show <laughs> this year. I'll uh, leave that uh, for... Uh, Real heads know. For the clip. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is it. This is uh, uh, your episode 15. Number one, five. But, uh, yes, yeah, Scott, I'm pretty pissed because my announcement sort of got Trump. Like, everything in Hollywood got pushed a couple weeks. Mm, so you got to push the announcement or I, are you going to announce gonna it I'm going to make here? the announcement, okay. Scott. And I came here because I was looking for a director slash writer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you announcing, then? That I'm writing that I've acquired the rights. Oh, you've acquired some rights. Scott, I have acquired the rights to the Holy Ninja Grail, Scott. Oh, my God. What could this possibly be? Let me think. Uh, the teenage. Scott. Oh, wait a minute. Are they mutants? They're mutants, Scott. Do they happen to be turtles? <laughs> and Scott, of course, they happen to be turtled. Teenage mutant. They turtled? They turtled. <laughs> they were turtled at one they, point. They were turtled. Is that is that part of the... I've never read nor seen no, any well, of the, the movies. No, the canon is they are turtles. They are f turtles from outer space? Yes. In, are they aliens? They're not from outer space. Now, Scott, there's two sort of canons in the turtle universe. Okay. And one is that they're sort I of... They were, they, are they more of the ninjaverse? Oh, good question. <laughs> Do they straddle... I just got the rights, baby. I gotta, read it. I gotta read a lot of this stuff. Okay. <laughs> I gotta make sure. But well, of course, hey, no better time when you were self quarantining. I'm sitting around self quarantining now, Scott. Of course, I've acquired the ninja rights. Of and course, I'm you doing, have. I'm, it's a. It's not the animated CGI rights. Not the Michael oh. Bay, Bay of it all. Okay, what so, kind of rights do you have? I've got the live action turtle rights, baby. Live action is is that uh, akin to the movie back in the what was it the 80s or the 1991, 90s? 1991, Scott. Mm. Ninja Turtles one. Highest grossing indie movie of all time. Independent film. It's I true, love it. Scott. And we're going back to our roots. This is an indie. <laughs> this is an indie. Yes, Scott. Not an Indiana Jones movie. It's, it's not an indie. Although, if you could get the rights to him. Shit, you know I've tried? Ninja, Ninja Anna Jones? <laughs> <laughs> I've tried hard. <laughs> You've tried hard. Why, why can't that be an alternate universe spinoff? Why can't Ninja Anna Jones be like Miles Morales of the... <laughs> exactly. Of the Indiana Jones of the universe, yes. I'll work on it, Jones I've got time. I'll work You've on it. I've got nothing but time I've got now. nothing but time. But my Turtles movie and pitch, you know, it's, it's gone, Scott. I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. This pitch is not perfect. Scott, here's the thing. I need a writer. <laughs> You've got some time. I do have Can a I get time. you involved, Scott? <sighs> what, what are you looking for? You're looking for someone to totally reinvigorate the franchise? Let me walk you through the premise, give you a, t a sort of... Oh, you already have a premise. We have a hard premise, Scott. We actually have a lot of scenes thought well, can out. Can you say a hard premise? <laughs> is that like a hard out or a no, no, hard it's sort no? Of like, it's sort of like, we're going to do notes. It's difficult. We're, we're going to do rewrites, but the, pre the, the premise, premise is never changing. Oh, okay. hell no, Scott. That is hard. Okay. This premise is going to... Okay, so here's the premise, Scott. All right, hit me. Opening scene. You have an opening scene as <laughs> yes, well. Yes, this yes. transcends a premise yes, into an is, opening scene. Wow. I guess we have sort of the whole movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> Great. So maybe, you have a hard whole movie. Maybe you could do punch up and direct. That's okay. something. That's how, yeah, that's something. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> we could do that. Uh, non-union, of course. Now, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Oh, Scott, opening scene. Mm. We're walking through the streets of 1992 New York City. We're walking? Who is this we? Well, the camera. <laughs> the camera is say, walking. When I say the we, cameraman. the cameraman is walking. <laughs> a lot of the movies through the perspective of the cameraman. <laughs> His POV, really. It, I, I guess so it's, all not, it's not the POV of his camera. No, no, it's no. his eyes. It's his eyes. You know, I guess, I guess all movies are for the POV of the camera. Man. I guess <laughs> it can come between angles and stuff. Sort of, it's, it's probably the POVs of several cameras. Several people. cameramen. The, the cameramen are always like the next. You know. No, it was like the next character, Scott. They, oh, that's right. I mean, New York is like the fourth character. And in, in this films. one, the New York is the first character. <laughs> New York is number one and camera people are number, number two? Number one on the call sheet, Scott. Wow. We're getting in a lot this of trouble dream. with SAG. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, opening scene. We're, we, the cameramen, are walking through the streets of New York. Mm. And of course, Scott, we see April O'Neil. Mm. She's older now. This is someone from the... Uh... Yes, April O'Neil is their, is their friend. This is their friend. Yes, she's okay. kind of like their friend. Hmm, let's see. Let's put this in terms you might understand. <laughs> You're going to have to explain friendship to me. Okay. So it's like they sort of hang out and they uh, like they eat pizza together. Not ringing a bell. Okay. They saved her life multiple times. Is that what friends do? I think so. Okay. <laughs> in my ninja world, of course. Of course. So, okay, so, so we see April, April O'Neil. April O'Neil. Big O'Neil. yellow jacket. She's walking down the mm. street. Just the other day? That's right, Scott. Wow. <laughs> so this is set one day in the in the past? It's it's no, it's one day in the future, Scott. Wow. Just the, when just the other day, it's yeah, a day in the future. Just the other day for well, with, with the cameraman's perspective, he's in the future. <laughs> the cameraman's walking through New York, he's sort of remembering all this stuff happening. Okay, so he's in the future, mm-hmm. but he remembers it as just the other day, meaning today? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Scott, you're getting it. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> so all right. So we're walking through the street. The Abel's walking through. All of a sudden. The uh, the Foot Clan take over the streets of New- Manhattan. The Foot Clan. The Foot Ooh. Clan. That's Shredder's gang. Scott. Oh, okay. Shredder is who? Shredder's the bad guy from Ninja Turtles. <laughs> okay. Is he a turtle? Has no. he been turtled? No, he's a Shredder. He's a Shredder. Okay. He is looks he, like a wait, can opener. He's like a rat, isn't he? No, that's Splinter. Scott. That's Splinter. Okay. I have I'll no walk idea. you through the whole canon here. <laughs> okay, great. I'm so sorry. Splinter. Just treat me like a dumb asshole okay, who's okay. never seen any of the teenage okay, Ninja okay. things. So in the first one, they they're underground. There's like some for some reason there are four turtles and a rat in the sewers. Here's and my, they're hanging here's, out. Here's my impression of it. This is all okay. like, uh, and Let's, all all I've seen is the Oprah interview with yes, them. Yes, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Check that yes, out if I, you haven't. That's but, actually pretty. Freaking great. For some reason, we were watching that on the Bang Bang television show, trying to figure out how to parody, and I don't know whether we were ever <laughs> successful. But here's my impression. Here's okay. what I think happened this in the movie. This will be good because I need to focus group this thing. Okay, here's what I think happened in the movie. At some point, they pick up a manhole cover, and they think it's a pizza, and they try to eat it, mm. and their teeth break. No, no, Scott. No, that never happens? No, but the, you, you, you that had... Is, okay. That is what I think happened in the movie. So you totally were right. Wrong. You were right for like three words. Re- manhole cover? No, no, no. They pick up a... <laughs> like four words. Four words. They pick up a... Okay. They pick up so a... So at some point, yes. something gets picked up. Yes. But instead of manhole cover, it's a canister of ooze, Scott. Ooze. The secret of the ooze, of course. Oh, I have heard of the secret of the ooze. Is the ooze something that they use? Ooze is they something the, that they, they use. They put the ooze in use? They, they put the ooze in use. They put the use in ooze because they used it. They put the use in use. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Now, Scott. This is in New York, right? This is, of course, in New York. Scott. Of course. It's the first character. So the ooze, of course, turned them into turtles. Then they learned. We turned them into turtles? No, no, no. Sorry. They, they turned <laughs> these, they turned these turned four turtles. Like, pet turtles, which must have been flushed down the toilet. <laughs> Separately, and then <laughs> separately, really. Yes. So they weren't brothers. No, I don't think so. I think they all gathered at they're by the ooze. Separate, they're, so there are four different children, exactly. Who and these? They're alive turtles, or they're alive. So, so I don't want this this pet turtle anymore. Even though it's alive, I'm right. going to kill it by flushing it. So four separate children did mm-hmm. this. They all gather in one place next to some ooze, next to a, a little rat, next to a little. And rat. the backstory of this rat is that the rat trained in Japan with a guy named Rokusaki. <laughs> Okay, this all makes so sense. So that makes sense. Okay. So the rat sort of trained and... This is separate from the ooze. Yes, Or yes. does he... No, no, no. Umato Yoshi. That's the guy you trade with. Urokusaki is Splinter, Scott. Oh, okay. Got so it. They, so they trained and then they got the ooze and then they became teenagers. <laughs> 
So they became teenagers, yeah, not, not for, ninjas at this point. No, and for some reason, Splinter became an old man. Oh, okay. But they mutated into They mutated. It. And so then, that takes care of the teenage yes. and the mutant And then Splinter it. taught and them the turtles, right? ninja. So he taught them how to be ninjas. Exactly. So that's okay. So every, it would have been a simpler story if they mutated into ninjas as well. It then would, it, it would Scott, have, you know, but this was an indie movie, Scott, because they were really digging into the sort of character <laughs> okay, stuff, you know, it's right. pretty good. So, so he anyway, teaches them, uh, yes. and then, and then the film ends. And then, no, the film starts <laughs> because then they're turtles. April's there. They save April. Big thing. They kill Shredder. Right? They kill Shredder? They kill Shredder. So, so Shredder's they're, dead. So this is like manslaughter or murder or what is it? It's pretty much murder. Casey Jones crushes... <laughs> the guy named Casey Jones, he fights people with the hockey sticks. The guy named sticks. Casey Jones? <laughs> I'm lost! <laughs> he fights people with hockey sticks and he like wears like a Jason mask. It's is this Casey fun. like Casey in the Sunshine Band? Like K dot C dot? Or is it Casey like C? That's a freaking great... That. Hold on, let me flip through the IP here. <laughs> you have the whole IP here? I have the whole thing right here. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, it looks like you are it's moving your hands like it's Minority <laughs> Report. It is, by yeah, the way. it is sort of a visual. Okay, it's a digital IP. Okay, here wow. we go. Show me Casey Jones. Enhance. Bring closer. Show name. All right, it's K dot C. It's K dot. It's, it's true uh, with a dot after the C. I hope as well. No, no, it's just an open ended. Open ended, baby. I think the C might be his middle name. Wow. Okay. So, anyways, Casey Jones. All this shit is canon, Scott. This is all canon from the first film. Yes, so and now, then in the second one, they learn the secret of the use. Secret of the use. The third one, they time travel. Now, okay, Scott. We're walking to the street. April O'Deal, big yellow coat. Okay. She's a big reporter. She's a reporter. Oh, that was. That's uh, part of it. She's a reporter. Has she become a reporter? She's always a reporter. She's always been a reporter. Great. That's part of it. She winks on the. She's like, I'd like to thank Michelangelo on, you know, whatever. Anyways. (laughs) (laughs) On TV or something? On TV, she's like, I like. When do we interview reporters now on TV? Is she on MSNBC or something? She's doing a special interest piece where she's like, I got beat up the other day and I was saved (laughs) by. Just the other day. And I was saved by Raphael or some shit. And she winks like. And she winks and then they're all like, so horny. I think they yeah. are. You've never seen like. I don't think I've ever seen a reporter wink. You've after never seen a story. like Van Jones say something on CNN and be like, "Yeah, you know, these black people need to get it together." That he winks. <laughs> You've never seen that. I, I, I would think if you I, pay if I saw Scott. Van Jones do that, I would think that was some sort of secret code. Like I don't actually mean it. You've got to pay attention, Scott. Okay. Van Jones dropping the winks. <laughs> now, Scott. First of all, I haven't gotten to the inciting incident in this movie. <laughs> well, so far we're just walking down the street. We're walking down the street, April O'Neil. Murdered. <gasps> what? She's killed immediately by, well, the foot. The foot? That's the gang that works for oh, 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 got it. She's killed. She's killed. April O'Neil's dead. What? How do they kill her? Well, sort of like a sword or something. A sword. So she's disemboweled. Yeah. This is what you're going to be writing, Scott. Oh, I see. So you got to so, figure out how she gets killed. Okay, so maybe in the stomach her guts fall out. I think so. Maybe like a, you know, like a cut down and something like a Game of Thrones degutting. Suddenly her, her coat turns red instead yeah. of yellow. Or I guess red plus yellow would be uh, hmm. more of a lighter red, maybe? Maybe or green? I don't know red, shit. Red plus yellow. What no, is that? This blue no, blue, blue, yeah, blue and yellow. Blue. Orange, baby. Yes, which is, of orange course, the coat. color of... Oranges? Michelangelo! Michelangelo! Scott, they all wear colors and stuff. It's fun. Colors. <laughs> colors. Remember Ice-T? <laughs> Co- colors. Is Ice-T involved in this? I we do remember Ice-T. We gotta get him back on yeah, the show. because I loved when he was on the show. <laughs> did you really? I did, and I do remember. Some people might have thought that that was not great. Some people thought maybe Ice-T shouldn't be on the show in this <laughs> but fashion. But how do you feel about but it? But me as a person who's, I don't know, pretty... Pretty much an authority on all things iced tea. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> I kind of like the voice. I yeah. thought, you know. Yeah. Was it like, it wasn't offensive. Anyways. Anyway. Uh, so, so anyways, April O'Neil dead. She's dead. Okay. So you're expecting the four turtles going to pop out, you know, kill everybody. Avenge. Avenge. Yeah. It's kind of like Avengers. The real Avengers, yeah. But then guess what, Scott? I, I couldn't even presume to guess. April O'Neil, at her funeral, only one turtle shows up. What? That's right, Scott. Did the, the invite get lost for no, of the Scott, turtles? This turtle is not wearing any colors. You can't tell which one it is. And he's crying. He's crying. Is he mutated in teenage as well? Well, let alone a ninja. He's, he's a teenager, so he's emo. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he's mutated, so he's got like big traps. Oh, wow. And he can do a backflip. Oh, but this is not one of the canonical turtles. It the, is, Scott, but the mystery is We don't which know which one. One, the colors. Scott. That's right. We can't tell them apart because they're wearing masks or the colors or what? Well, they were originally all gray masks. Okay. But then they were like, we can't tell these characters apart. We've got to give them colors. The toy okay. company, of course. Right. Okay. They, they so the turtles everything. have similar faces. They do. They look okay. exactly alike. Okay. <laughs> to be honest, they must be twins. <laughs> It's crazy. I'm not going to say all turtles look alike because that's racist. <laughs> but I will. I'm going to say it. Okay. Thank so you. anyways, there's only one turtle and he's there. And then this kid is, you know, Casey Jones, he's at the funeral. He walks up to him. He says, hey, which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> and this turtle, he looks back at Casey Jones and he says, I'm no one. The turtles are dead. <gasps> The turtles are dead, but that, he's a turtle and he's alive. That's ah. right, Scott. In this world, three of the four turtles are, are dead. dead. So Scott. they died in between the last movie? That's right. Wow. And here's the reveal. I guess that makes sense. Michelangelo is a party dude. Okay, sure. So he's yeah. fucking dead from heroin. Okay. Uh. <laughs> he fully OD'd. <laughs> fully OD'd. Well, here's the thing. You find out Splinter left. They were like the dad. As soon as Splinter left. Oh, he's the glue. He's so the they're, glue. They're lost Michelangelo now. did heroin. Uh, Donatello, audio erotic fixation. <laughs> fixation, really? <laughs> yes. Against and, a doorknob or? Uh, it was a closet. It was like a closet hanger thing. Oh, like he was, okay. He was tied up to a thing. And then uh, Leonardo died of uh, testicular cancer. Testicular cancer. He what was so busy being a vigilante, he didn't go to the doctor. Oh, you got to get those checks. You got to get your balls checked. That's a big part of the movie. It's amazing to me that you can pay someone to feel your balls. <laughs> and they have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, Scott, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> when you think about it, Hold it's on. legal. I want everyone to just take, at home, take a second. Think about this. If you have balls, if you don't. Uh, if you're a woman, um, or if you don't have balls, imagine what it's like to have balls. Imagine it. You're I'm walking sure our, around. Our, our upcoming guest, Griff Hedgley, the he might have guy, something to he say might about have, that. Yeah, he but you're have. walking around, there's these two things between your legs. You're like, oh, they're balls here. Sure. Sometimes they're not even between the legs. They're Sometimes a little they're more like in front. A little in front. <laughs> Sometimes you get older and they're and always they're behind. in between the legs. I think that would be very painful. That would be great. But then, uh, you remember when that guy from Punky like Brewster sat on down. his balls? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was that guy's name? It's not the guy from Punky's Brewster. What was Punky's it? Brewster? <laughs> is, is that uh, the plural of Punky Brewster? I think it might be. It's a Punky's Brewster. No, it was Mr. Belvedere. Mr. Did. Belvedere sat Ooh. on his balls. Is that what he said? Oh. Well, that was, that's the Doug Benson joke. <laughs> Oh, Doug he, does an he does an impression of Mr. Belvedere sitting on his own ball. Ooh, I gotta get Doug Benson <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> I gotta get Doug Benson on the phone. You can get him involved in this. <laughs> he's, he's an idiot guy. So, anyways, you find out. If any of this time travel, time travel. Yes. Okay. Wait. Which one of the turtles is this? Uh, well, that's a mystery. We don't know. Wait, but uh, you just Michael said the three, the one, three so of them are dead. So it has to be it's Raphael. It's got to be Raphael. Yeah. The outcast of the bunch. He's the outcast. Spodiodi, Doppelicious, <laughs> whatever the fuck that song's called. <laughs> I have no idea. It's an outcast song. Oh, okay. Oh, is that from the turtles movie? We're going to be using that song exclusively <laughs> okay, throughout. So Scott, there's one turtle left. He goes to get his uh, time travel lantern, which is from the third one. Okay, sure. He travels back in time mm, to back save in time. Exactly, we use that song too. <laughs> Great. And he saves his brothers from killing themselves. Whoa! So he goes back, stops the heroin. Technically, the testicular cancer didn't kill himself. No, but he takes him to the doctor. He walks oh, okay. him through the he surgeries and the so treatments. He goes back very far. He goes back away. He got to go back three times, kind of like Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, this part they're going back, and then they bring all the turtles back to the future. Okay, so so instead of leaving them where they were and letting them age mm -hmm. gracefully, no, he brings to, them to the point where Raphael. That's is. not how time travel works anymore. Have you not okay. seen Endgame, baby? Okay, so so Raphael then is considerably older than the other three That's during right. the movie. Okay. That's right. So now we've got three Ninja Turtles and sort of a like. You know, chill older turtle. Okay. <laughs> chill older uncle yeah, so, turtle. So Raphael is is not teenage. He's, He's no not longer teenage. teenage. But right. then you find out at the end of the movie, post credit scene, they go back in the, because Raphael's got to die in this motherfucker, right? Sure. Post credit yeah. scene, they go back in time, get a teenage Raphael from the past. Whoa. And we're rebooting the franchise with a teenage version of the turtle. So the teenagers who were back in the 90s, right, they have been transported now right. into the 2020s. It's sort of like a days of future past timeline. Yeah. Scott. Well, we're creating a new turtle verse. Of course. Now, yeah. now, Scott, how do you feel about this? You want to write? Yes, of course. This, I mean, this is great, right? This, is, I mean, everything we, we you kill just... April O'Neil right away. You <laughs> That's know. the part I'm most excited about. It's so fun. <laughs> you get to write a death scene in the first. You get to refrigerator April O'Neil. That, That's really it's so I... tight. But then, guess what? You've got the power time travel. You bring her ass back, baby. Bring her ass back and make her teenage. 
Ooh, then that's she could good, date Scott. the turtles. Scott, we are fucking vibing right now. <laughs> this coronavirus thing is kind of a fucking opportunity. We can go really back to is. the drawing board. By the way, I'm on Molly right now. Are you? Hell yeah, Scott. <laughs> we well, are of rolling. course it's canon that I love rolling. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I love going to Vegas in, every weekend. In honor of you, I took some. Are you, are you upset that uh, all the casinos are closing? I am, Scott. But you know, I'm doing my own little home casino sitch. <laughs> Wait a minute. So I'm, people are going over no, to your house? No, no, no. I'm gambling online. Oh, you're gambling online. And I'm doing Molly. And I'm sort of just like every few minutes throwing money out my window. So and you're putting like all, Vegas. all your food out on the counter so it's a buffet? Yeah, I'm, I'm walking, I'm grazing, I'm like, oh, do I want some peanuts? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll you get hired some someone to bring you free drinks. Exactly. So it's it's going pretty well at home. <laughs> okay, great. Well, <laughs> I've I, created my own Vegas and I'm rolling all the time. I may work from home. I hope you don't take uh, offense at that. Scott, but, uh, that's, uh, let me tell you something. Before you were saying you didn't want to demand that people stay home, take it from Sprague to whisper, baby. Let me whisper a little something in everyone's ears. <laughs> Stay home, baby. Stay home. Don't First be all, like us. Watch Ninja Turtles 1. They're, they're, it's on Netflix. It's pretty good. Where, where, where are the other two? Where do they reside on the I streaming think they're both platforms? on Netflix. They're, they're all on Netflix. They're all go on home and watch these. Well, you've got to catch up if you're going to watch. Really I feel cool. like I did watch them, though. You, you described I them I did perfectly. describe them pretty well. Yeah. Number one, five. There you go. There you go. Episode 15. There you the go te- again. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I think what happened since this episode is then the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came up on a few episodes that, that Sean was not on. Yes. And he was listening to those and, going, <laughs> and getting enraged because I was getting all of the uh, details wrong. And so that is why we decided to do our spinoff show which is called We've Got to Stop Talking About CBB. No, Got to Stop Talking About TMNT, TMNT on CBB, on CBB uh, which is our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles podcast where uh, Sprague the Whisperer takes me through um, all of the movies and a lot of the cartoons. And uh, we, I believe our final episode is this week, uh, this Wednesday. And uh, we've had great guests on that. Yourself, Paul F. Tompkins. Great. Tatiana Maslany and Christian Brune, uh, Michael Ian Black talking about when he played one of the turtles, <laughs> um, Seth Green, who's played one of the turtles as well. Do you know what um, I think about a lot is Michael Ian Black talking about when the kids would want to fight him? <laughs> <laughs> and he would say, whoa, little dude, I came here to party. <laughs> <laughs> would that always de-escalate the situation, I wonder? I wonder if they were, like, some oh, people were like, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm here to party as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I, I, I guess I just saw you and I thought... <laughs> He likes to fight. I'm going to fight him. But you're right. This is a party situation. I apologize. But also one thing he talked about was he was doing the voice while Ben Garant was doing the body. Right. <laughs> but then he said that sometimes, look, you can look, anyway, you can listen to go the whole back. Thing. You can do your own research, as David Gregory said. People can get those episodes at Sean Distin's Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Sean Distin. Uh, he's a really funny guy. Obviously, we just heard that. Clip. They can also get him on my Patreon. I've been what? I've been yeah, I've been saving the episodes like Stitcher and used then to putting do? him up on my Patreon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Remember that? My Patreon is a uh, it's a podcatcher, and uh, <laughs> I just put other people's podcasts up there and charge you for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to be hearing episode fourteen. Very exciting. We'll be right back with more comedy. Bang bang. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang. Uh, we're back. This is best of 2020, a year that uh, everyone will remember for the rest of their lives. Look, I, I probably remember all the years I've lived through. You don't remember. Do you remember uh, 1981? Sure. No, you It was don't. Uh, January of 1981 through December of 1981. Oh, shit. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I stand corrected. I remember. All the years 2020, 2019, 2018, 2016. You don't remember, you don't remember 19, uh, uh, 95. Oh man, this is a stumper. Uh, oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. That started, I think, January 1st, 1995. Yes, when did it end? September, no, oh. uh, no. I think it was December 31st of 1995. Damn, this guy's good. <laughs> In any case, 2020, we're going to remember the... I remember every year I've lived through. (laughs) We'll probably remember (laughs) what happened in 2020. This will be a demarcation point, I'm I'm sure. I can't remember these episodes. I I guess what I mean is we will remember 
2020, it's going to be a demarcation thing of like, remember life before 2020 yes, and after 2020. That's right. But 2020 itself is a big, long blur. Imagine the children growing up right now who they won't remember what it was like. We'll have to yes. tell them. But they won't know. Imagine as many children as you can. They How many can you imagine? 30. At this point? I can imagine 31. These children won't, they won't even know they how met crazy they drove their parents. <laughs> They'll just think they had a regular ass life. No. And then 30 years from now, mom and dad will be complaining about them you going You tortured like, me. <laughs> it was a living hell. <laughs> Why are they so old? We were trapped with you. That's how, they, that's how long they waited. <laughs> that's like Todd Glass's joke about how when you were a oh, yeah. kid and you were like imitating a 50 year old, you'd be like, hello, I'm 50. <laughs> and now when you see 50 year olds, it's like, hi, I'm 50. I'm in a band. I'm in a band. Come see us this Friday. <laughs> Todd, I haven't seen Todd in forever. I know. He texted me the other day. It was just like, hi, Scott. I just wanted to say hi. Isn't that nice? Do you know, he texted me and I owe him a text and I feel bad about oh, it, but it's like, feel terrible. I feel, I do feel terrible. So thank you. Mission accomplished. Um, <laughs> but this year, like we're, it, it's, it's a weird, a uh, thing where some simple correspondences fell through the cracks. Yeah. Where it's just like I... Even though we're just sitting there at our computers and not yeah, doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the, the act of of just communication between people seems so futile and hopeless, does it not? Yeah. I mean, I like to call it clinical depression. <laughs> well, that's why doing this show is so... Uh, stupid. Stupid, yes. Why do we keep doing it? No, but... Uh, I I am happy that we were able to keep it going this year. Uh, Me too. When, when everything seemed stacked against us. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of keeping it going, why don't we keep this countdown going? Uh, this is episode number 14. Number one, four. Ah. Uh, do you remember 14? <laughs> no, of course you don't. You don't know I what would, it is. I don't know what it is. All right. This is episode 634. And this is from January. We're well, in the 600s. Okay. Yeah, we're still in the 600s. Yeah, okay. That gives me a clue. <laughs> I believe we will be in the 600s. Well, this don't, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Okay. Well, um, this is from January 13th. So this is pre-pan. Damn. This is pee-pee. Scott. Poo-poo. <laughs> Scott, grow, grow up. Grow some balls. Grow some living room balls. Grow some living room balls. <laughs> Uh, I like the idea of David Paymer. Anytime he leaves the house, he gently takes his balls off and puts them in a container in the living room. <laughs> you don't think they like just shrivel up inside his body? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> made it worse. Okay, so this is January 13. I believe this is the second episode of the year, if I had to guess. Sorry, Who are you waving I'm at? Waving a little at a, bird? A squirrel. A squirrel. Great. Um, uh, don't get to do that in the studio. Hi. He's looking at me like, are you a predator? <laughs> Oh, he's are getting you, a little closer. Are you one of the predators? He's a little bold. I like it. I like. When oh, a I see is, him. Yeah, I like when a squirrel is. How bold. close has a squirrel ever gotten to you? Oh my god, at Griffith Park. Yeah, y you can walk right up to them because people feed them all the time. Oh, and they want the food. Oh, and it's wow. kind of it's it's unnerving because yeah. you get closer and he's not running away. <laughs> yeah, and then you get really close. And you're, it's like, what are you doing here? They can rip your balls off. They will rip David Pamer style. <laughs> That's what happened to him. <laughs> he could rip your balls off. Let's popularize it that David Paymer has no balls. Oh, come on. He's nice. He's great. He's one of the best. But we should get it out there that he has no balls. We should get it out there. <laughs> Can I tell a story really quickly yeah. that I told on Twitter? And it's not it's not about David Paymer, but for whatever reason, it, this David Paymer reminded me of this story. My uh, wife, Janie, and I and uh, my old friend, Buddy Fitzpatrick, we were in Manhattan we were having dinner in Manhattan. The dinner ended early. Twenty one club. <laughs> we, were, we were probably at the twenty one club. <laughs> no, knowing how broke you were, probably more like the thirteen club. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> I told you that in confidence. <laughs> how broke you were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please don't look at my net worth. <laughs> um. Uh, 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 so we were we finished dinner early, and we're like, "What should we do now?" And then, for some reason, we looked to see if there was any any a uh, play that we could go see. Mm. Um, and there was a play that was happening nearby, walking distance from the restaurant. And we said we we had heard like a little like it got positive reviews. We didn't know anything about it really. We're like, "Let's go see it right now." Yeah. It was a, it was a one act play, no intermission. It's like this is great. Let's go see it. So we went and saw it. It was great. We really enjoyed it. And afterwards, we're talking out in front of the theater. And, you know, like the, eventually the cast comes out one by one. People trickle out. And we're saying, oh, you were great. The thing, blah, blah, blah. 
one of the guys who was like had one of the the biggest roles in the play walks out of the theater and we say to him hey you were terrific in the show and he is saying thank you but he's looking at us he's got this strange expression on his face like he's humoring us like <laughs> it's so weird and we keep like, saying like almost like he thinks he did a bad job and he's like oh okay no he's you he has Humoring an expression us, on his like, face like he doesn't know what we're talking about. Oh, okay. but he's trying to just be like, oh, oh OK, sure. yeah. yeah, great job in the <laughs> play. It was so strange. And he kept doing it. We we're like, no, it was really you were so good. You were fantastic. Uh, and he's like, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. OK, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and well, then he sure. walked away. And it was so strange to the point where we were like. Was that the guy? Like we just saw <laughs> we him. Just saw him. It absolutely stage. was him. We saw him walk out of the theater, and it was so. His, and if it was his twin brother who's like a stagehand, he should be used to it. At yeah, this point. <laughs> exactly. So I later found I put that story on Twitter, and uh, it's not. And people were like, "Was it this person?" They're guessing all these famous people. It's right. like it's not a famous. Of course, it's not a famous actor. <laughs> right. So then, a friend of mine in in New York. Um, Said, By the way, when you put out something anonymously, and I, I've gone through this recently, yeah. you don't do it so people can speculate no. online and bring up cool people's names into it. Yeah. You know it's what I mean? Like, like, what if this guy is on like Twitter? I, spe- I, I, I told a story recently on a show about an actor that I did not care for, and people were speculating, like all these wonderful people. Yes. And and dragging them into it, and I'm like, no, I kept it anonymous for a reason. Now, of yeah, course, I hope they were tagging them as well. Oh, boy, were you talking about this person? <laughs> hey, this guy may be talking about you. Um, but it's like I thought. Well, if this guy's on Twitter, I don't want people like yeah giving him a hard time or whatever. Um, and the point of the story was not that it was a famous person. It was just a little story that I was telling. Right. But uh, so my friend in New York said, which play was it? And I told her the name of the play, and she said, was it this guy? And I was like, yes, it was! <laughs> and apparently he is famous for being extremely socially awkward. Oh, like, okay. he's known for it. And I was like, wow, that makes sense, and what a relief to have it confirmed. Well, uh, you know, you never quite know what people are going through. and uh, That's true, too. You know, because I, I believe there, there was a person that I knew who was very odd and strange anytime you talk to him and you kind of go like what's that person's problem and then you find out they actually do have something going on so it's like you never know do you know i worked with a comedian years ago in philly who was at the time was not a um was only a comedian he was not known for anything else he was just like a uh a very he was a well-known road comic really funny guy and i was excited to work with him like i'd seen him on tv like back in the days of you know short attention span theater and the a-list and stuff like that on, right. on comedy central was and, it this person was it this person <laughs> and i he was having like a hard time that week with something and I don't know what it was. Like, he's really funny on stage. Off stage, like, I remember him making a phone call and, uh, like, there was a payphone in the lobby of the club. And I think the middle act was on stage. I think I was emceeing that week. The middle act was on stage and he was trying to make this phone call. And he, like, something was going wrong and he kept angrily, like, hanging up the phone. And then he would have to put in. This is, this is like the days of payphones. <laughs> right. He had to put oh. in wherever he was calling. He had to put in so like much $5 money. Worth it was of, fucking yeah. crazy. I remember those days. Oh, God. And so he's like, he's on, he's like, he put in like 50 quarters. Yeah. And then I said, hey, um, I have a, if you want, I have a calling card that you could use, you know? And he just, he like half turned to me and went, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really bummed out because I really liked this guy. Right. And then I felt, so I always felt like, and then I, I met him again years later and told him that story. Right. And he was kind of shamed by it. He was like, yeah, I, I think I was probably having a hard time that week. And then I felt so stupid. Like, why did I tell why And I wasn't you, trying yeah. to shame him. I was like. You're just like, hey, remember This me? is like a funny story. From sto- you snapping To me? me, this is a funny story. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I instantly realized, yeah, why would he want to hear this story? Right. Yeah. And so I felt bad about that. Right. Then I heard a story about him that I th- I I then didn't feel bad again. Oh man. <laughs> the story I heard about him was somebody somebody told me a story about him that they had worked with him on something. Uh and this was like they this person was uh, was uh, on the crew of this this project. And they said, "Yeah, he told me a story once about you know being in Vegas and he was in a limo 
and he was being taken to the airport and uh you know uh he he was getting to the you know he's chatting with the driver and then when they got to the the airport he said what's the biggest tip you've ever gotten to the driver <laughs> and the driver said um uh two hundred dollars and or a hundred dollars and then well here's 101 <laughs> he, he gave him 200 dollars mm. and said who gave you that 100 dollar tip and the driver said it was you uh. <laughs> and and they then so this person's telling me this story like isn't that like an awesome story right, yeah. and i was like that's a frank sinatra story <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> that's like an ancient story yeah, yeah. <laughs> from the 50s or whatever right and and then I made that person feel bad that told me the story. Oh, geez, the cycle of <laughs> you know, everyone feeling look, bad look, because of do, me. <laughs> why do humans interact with each other? This is the question. You humans are so curious. We, to me. Here, but here's the here's the the moral of this story. If I can take a moral from what you're saying, and sure, and, do and it. Put it onto it because I don't that, have one. Well, it's just that we need to give each other uh, more, uh, breaks and uh, be yes. more lenient with each other yes, yes, and yes. and be kinder to each other and remember that everyone's going through well, something. I wouldn't go and, that far. I think we can give each other some, breaks. Some people are assholes and we should uh, 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 yeah. put them through cancel culture. We should give each other breaks. Do not be kinder to each other. Cancel <laughs> people when you are able. <laughs> <laughs> if you're ever able to cancel someone, take that opportunity because it may to, not come around again. You've got a chance to cancel someone. <laughs> you got to do it. Do it for me. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's fun to cancel people. They, nobody stays canceled. No, it, it takes six months off. Ryan Adams just put out a, a record. There you go. Sinead O'Connor, the only person seems yes, permanently he, canceled. Yeah, unfortunately, had had the best <laughs> for haircut, like the rightest reason. Oh, <laughs> not that she was that. Not that she was wrong, but that they what she did was right. I think. Yes, exactly. And well, we, I'm phrasing we, it poorly, but she was but like, "We're on the side of the angels with as far as Sinead goes." That's right, and Sinead is an angel. That's right. isn't she though? Oh, don't all angels have shaved heads? <laughs> Is that the first thing that happens in heaven? Yep. St. Peter first, gets out the clippers? First thing that happens. Come here, you. <laughs> Just like in Stripes. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember in Stripes, everybody got their head shaved, but then Bill Murray and Harold Ramis yeah, decided got, not they to. They got nice haircuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was no explanation of it. This is like Tommy Lee Jones in Batman. Uh, who showed up to work and saw the Two Face makeup that would have taken an hour or no three hours to apply, and then said, "I'm not doing that." And so they had to come up with like a, a face covering that they could put on in 20 minutes for him, which is why it looks I so never shitty. heard that story. <laughs> yeah, that's why it looks terrible. <laughs> no, I think uh, just make me uh, half purple. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's not going to get. And he was right. It didn't. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Uh, it what just they, doesn't matter. What speaking if of stripes, it's speaking of stripes and meatballs, what if uh, that's true? What, <laughs> what if speaking that of meatballs had, spaghetti? What if that? <laughs> <laughs> speaking of meatballs spaghetti. <laughs> It's too early. Too early for this. Too early. I'm getting too old for this shit. Uh, Or as Doug Benson would say in his joke, I'm getting too old for this shit. (laughs) Um, Okay, so this is January 13, Paul. Okay. So this was pre-pandemic, and this is an episode called Wayne Scotting, Entre Pinur, and Italiano Jones. (laughs) Now, this, of course, of course has uh, our friend David Wayne from yes. Stella and the State and director of great movies uh, like... Uh, they came together. They came together, role models, etc. cetera. The drummer. Uh, Wet Hot American Summer, of course. Uh, creator uh, or co-creator of Children's Hospital, all that. Oh. I mean, he is a drummer, not that he directed Whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of our favorite guests to have on the show, uh, our senses of humor uh, really align. And uh, yeah. anytime he's on the show, we call it Wayne Scotting because his name is David Wayne and I'm Scott. And uh, I get it. you get it. And this has uh, two performers. Uh, this has the aforementioned Ego Wodum from Saturday Night Live. And we're going to be hearing a clip of her. And it also has Carl Tart, uh, another one of our favorites to have on the show. Now we're going to be hearing both of these people. And Ego is playing Entre P. Newer who she's been doing on the show for a while, who is an inventor. And uh, uh, at a certain point, we heard uh, Carl play her brother, Appetizer P. Newer. <laughs> uh, but Carl, well, yes. I remember that. I, 
I remember that episode where at the end, Carl is looking at his phone, <laughs> and they're doing the plugs, and everybody's yelling at him, and he doesn't realize, because right. they're calling him appetizer. <laughs> yeah, we're like, he's appetizer. Not, he's not hey, appetizer. <laughs> and he's reading something on his phone. We're like, appetizer. <laughs> and he doesn't respond. <laughs> he's like, huh? <laughs> Um, Carl's so funny. Carl, he's so uh, funny. He's not playing appetizer pinur on this. No, he is playing Italiano Jones, which is <laughs> the right. uh, first time he did this character. It's really, I think, of the last. Um, really uh, funny. We're going to be hearing two clips from this. Uh, first, uh, we're going to be hearing David. Uh, you. David, Second, you hitting the <laughs> you floor. Hitting the floor. <laughs> uh, we're going to be hearing David and I talking to Andre Pinur, and then uh, Italiano Jones will come in. This is your episode 14. Number one, four. Um, our next guest is a small business owner, um, and they, uh, have been on the show before. Oh, yes. Uh, please welcome back to the show, Entree Pinuer. How you doing, Scott? I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm all right. A little perturbed. You this is David me- Wayne, by the way. Hi, David. Nice to see you. David Lil Wayne. Entree Pinuer. Has anyone ever called you that? David Lil Wayne. Th- I love it. Can Dave- that be my new moniker? Yes. Do you rap? I, of course. Do you have a little penis? I got a little penis. Scott, have you I'm seen Lil Wayne? I'm suggestions Scott, of have the you subject seen matter Lil of Wayne's rap. dick? <laughs> have I seen Lil Wayne's dick? I'm presuming. Why would you call Alert your, the press. Why would you call yourself Lil anything unless you had a little dick and you were proud of it? Maybe it's a stature thing. Lil Bow Wow? Little dick. You've seen all these dicks. Well, you saw my dick in the locker room before we started recording. <laughs> That's right. We have a locker room here where we all shower before the show and we change. And a lot of times we take a steam. And sometimes we'll be doing the show just in towels. Uh, today we uh, we were wearing. A, 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 you're branded by Nike. I can tell. Uh, yeah. You have the swoosh everywhere. Scott's what? wearing a robe, but his dick is poking out. Look. That's look. I know that with Weinstein and all that, he's finally on trial. But give me something. <laughs> I can't change that quickly. That's okay, Scott. I'm not holding it against you. Just want your listeners to know how you. I like to hold it dress. against you. Okay. How are you, Andre? Ouch. Okay. Do you, Scott? <laughs> yes. I'm not interested in relations. You're not. No. Well, you, you said you had a bone to pick with me. Speaking I of do. bones, bones. <laughs> Another bone, a different Speaking bone. Speaking of David Boreanaz. A different bone to pick. I don't think you want your bone picked. Do you think David Boreanaz, anyone ever on the set Is of Bones? Is this the one from, oh yes, from Bones. Anyone ever set, went up to him and said, I got a bone to pick with you, and then they laughed and they high five. David, take this one. I thought that was your new nickname for me, David Boreanaz. For moments there, I did as <laughs> David well. Boring Wayans. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> this is your oh, chance. Too close to comfort. Hey, I'm the one with the small dick. Oops. <laughs> oh, no. Hi, Andre. Uh, hi. You know, Scott, my bone to pick with you is that you call me a small business owner. I'm not a business owner. I'm an inventor. You are an inventor. I'm sorry. original ideas. I'm sorry. You have never, you don't have a small business where you have the capital in order to make these I'm seeking ideas. capital. You need the capital. And David Wayne, by the way, I a, lot of, a lot of passive income from his it. various projects. I David. do a lot of seeding. Financial seed money that that I put in escrow until you, it can yeah you basically like mature. plant a few seeds watch these babies grow but if you have something to pitch I'd be willing to put in a couple million dollars to hear the pitch okay just to hear the just pitch? to hear the pitch I have lost a lot of money this I way. typically <laughs> accept Bitcoin but I will take a couple million. I will take a couple million. And a couple now, we're talking to. It's going to take me just a little bit to put together the cash. That's a lot of money. You and have so- a lot of, uh, uh, you have, like we mentioned, passive income, but uh, you're not really entirely liquid, you were telling well, me. I want aggressive income. Okay? Yeah, I don't know that I'm that liquid. I, I do, I have, right. certain, I have hobbies, but go on. Okay. Okay, now, Entre. Y- yes, Scott. Uh, I should warn you, David, that Entre's been on the show before. Okay. And Entre tends to Why have. Why does that require a warning? <laughs> What did you I, just why say? does that require warning? <laughs> Consider myself horned. <laughs> you are horned. Why do you why do you feel you need to horn him? Well, <laughs> well I, I I just your your ideas have never borne fruit necessarily into uh, Have you borne fruit? I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Well, I don't you know what you're know talking about. You wouldn't about. understand. Do you want me to were, part this rope? If you were a woman, <laughs> you wouldn't know what it is to bore fruit. And just to be clear, David, Wayne, I'm not a woman. Okay. I'm a, there's I, a there's a bit of d- discrepancy in our memories about that, <laughs> about I, whether you're a, wo- a woman. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I believe I am a man. 
Okay. And the, and my my belief is that may not have been established. Uh, you know, well, Scott, consider it established. But for 2020. 2020, it's a new decade. Entrepreneur is a gentleman who uh, has come in here and has uh, pitched us various things. And my, my the one problem that I would say, Entre, is that you tend to pitch You're things. You're a hater. <laughs> it's not that I'm a Aside hater. from that problem, what well, else? Uh, you tend to pitch – well, I don't even want to spoil it because uh, I, I want David to just have a fresh ears. I like fresh to hear ears. the pitch fresh or else that, it fresh, clouds my judgment. Fresh pitch for you, David Lowey. Okay. So I'm thinking of something. I'd like your $2 million. What it is is something that is rectangular in shape. Base. The base, excuse me, hear me out. Okay. Everything's a bit you, of a rectangle. Well, you seem to you seem to focus primarily, if I may be so bold, on rectangular things. Because I think when you pitched us a hospital, sure. it was basically a rectangle. Was it a rectangle? I think it was. No mm. offense, Scott. A lot of things are rectangular. Thank that you very true. much. Thank I, you very no much. Offense. Many no things offense. are born no, of a rectangle. Taken. None taken. Many things are born of a rectangle. Rectangular base. Okay. It's con- it's going to be connected to the ground. Okay? okay. We'll maybe do some molding around it connected to the ground. And then another rectangle uh, upright on a different on a, on another side connected to So it's like to that an one. upside down T. I'm just sketching yes, this out. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Then we're going to so go So sort of like the uh, Titans Tower from the Teen Titans but upside down. Right. Like an upside down time out sign on a sports field. Right. Okay. Okay. So you know what a sports field is. Of course. Come and you on. You know the Scott, rules. So I'm not that a damn idiot. Okay. I'm not a stupid. Okay. The top of it is an oval. A top. A top of the upside. You're down. so focused on shapes. Are you? What do you what have against shapes? Well, you're I'm just I'm trying to figure out what you're this a shape is. is. It's a rectangle, and then another Scott, rectangle, then an oval. You're, well, you're, we have an upside down T. And it, on the top oval of it is, an oval. is kind of the oval is kind of on. Is not upright per se. It's on its side. Oh, sort of like the basis. Anyway, are you t- pitching the Leaning Tower of Pisa? No, no, okay. Scott. Uh, no, like- I would never. That exists already. Maybe Why would I pitch that? This is a basketball hoop. No, you're gonna sit on top of it and let your dookie out. Okay. Let your pee pee out. Okay. And then there's going to be a little... Now, let, yeah, let Why your do- all the talk about rectangles when you're you're pitching a toilet? I don't have a name for it, Scott. Thank you. That's brilliant. I love it. Toilet. It, it exists. Call it, a toilet. it exists Never already. Never heard of it. Never heard you of it. You don't use a toilet? Never heard what of it. What do you use? To do what? To do what you just said. The dookies. To dookies? Well, not dookies. To dookies. I, I do it right where I am. <laughs> Wherever I find myself. Wherever you lay your hat? Wherever I lay my hat. Is your home? Yes. Which is never near a toilet? I don't know what that is. If y'all want to call it a toilet. I, what is your house like? I'm you don't have a you... mattress? You don't have a toilet? Where do you live? Where do I live? With my mother. <laughs> well, she's well, that, dead. Well, that, that explains it. That explains she's it. She's dead. I don't own a home. She's dead. She's dead. She's but dead. she still lives there? No, I just call it her house. But So you know what a house is? Because I think you pitched me those once. Is that what that's called? Yes. Okay. I love the sound of it. Okay. I love to see it. What kind of house doesn't have a toilet? D- David so, just drew I one. I can it's, tell you. Uh, David uh, drew. A house that beautiful. doesn't have a toilet. David. A birdhouse. <laughs> Thank you, David. You're right. That was great. You're right. A birdhouse doesn't have a David, toilet. David Touché. drew what looks like a vanity mirror. So you know what a vanity mirror is. Why is, is that so alarming to you, Scott? What is, you, what is in your bathroom? What a, a vanity and that's it? And si- vanity, what about sinks? A vanity and a, couple, and a sink. One sink so and a vanity. So you know what sinks are? Sure, yes. So you know what plumbing is? What is? No. Why do you have to complicate things? What? What? Where does the water go in your sink? I don't know. It Do just you know? disappears? Where does your water go in your sink, Scott? It go, it goes, Where exactly does it end up, Scott? Go. You have two seconds. In the Pacific go. Ocean. Oh, Interesting. All I know is if someone said to me, describe a toilet, I would say an upside down T with an oval <laughs> on top. All right, look, we need to get to our next guest. Uh, he is a lawyer. Please welcome to the show Italiano Jones. Hello, thank you for having me. My name is Italiano Jones and I will fight for you. Oh, it's so nice to meet you, I Mr. Jones. I work the law offices of Italiano Jones and Associates and other miscellaneous items. Hmm, Okay. 
That sounds great. What type of cases? Uh, by the way, this is uh, Entrepreneur. How you doing, young sir? How are you? I'm Italiano Jones of Italiano Jones and Law Services and Miscellaneous Other Items. Mm-hmm. And this is David Wayne. Hello, Hello of, David. Of nice Wayne to Scotty, meet you. Uh, Jimmy to TMZ. It seems like your uh, law firm changed its name in the last couple of minutes. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> My law offices never change their name. We will fight for you. I heard that you came here in an Amalamps. <clears throat> yes, I did. <laughs> Would you like? Uh, did they? Did Can they, you spell ambulance? <laughs> I will spell it for you. Absolutely, <laughs> ambulance. A M B U L A N C E. Ambulance. <laughs> he, he's right. <laughs> Whoa, Whoa, Black Betty. Ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> a a very, little law office joke. Sounds like I found my lawyer. Would Would you not agree? An ambulance is a very rectangular vehicle. Yes, they mostly are rectangular. I but know in what, Europe, but those exist. Those in, exist. You know about those? Yeah. In oh. Europe, they are oblong. Are they now? Yes, I would know. I'm from Italy. You are? Yes. I, I wondered, Italiano Jones, is that a nickname? Why do you sound like you're from Chicago? <laughs> it is a family name from Italy. I am from Italy. <laughs> what part of Italy are you from? Tuscany. And why is your family name your first name? <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do things in Italy. Oh, I see. It's a, I wasn't aware of that. Can you right. spell so in, Italy? in other words, everyone in Italy is called Italiano or something. <laughs> can you spell it? Can you spell it? I-T-A-L-Y, Italy. Mm. What type of law do you practice, Italiano? I practice all types of law. Do you have a case? Are you in any type of trouble? Have you been injured in an accident? Have you been injured in a, a self-inflicted wound? <laughs> Self-inflicted wound? Who am I going to sue if it's a self-inflicted wound? We can sue th- t- thousands of people. We can sue so many people. Who do you sue? I, I guess the, you. the makers of the weapon that I use? We can, smoo- we can sue <laughs> Smith & Wesson. We can sue just Wesson cooking oil. Italiano! If you slipped on a bottle of Wesson cooking oil. On the bottle you, itself, not, not the yourself. product? Yes. Oh, yeah. And you shot yourself. How ironic would that be? You, you Think have... about this. You are holding a gun. And you are also <laughs> frying something in your kitchen. Why would I and be you, doing that? <laughs> and you put the bottle down. Am I down. trying to defend myself while I'm frying? Am I, hey, are case, there, you live in a rough Maybe you can't find a spoon and you've got to stir with something. Okay. You, you live in South, stir with something. You live in South Italy, like me. I grew up in a rough neighborhood. Oh, yeah. The streets was tough. The, the uh, pointy toe of that boot? The pointy toe of the boot, absolutely. Mm-hmm. The pointy heel of the boot. Did you grow up with the Godfather? I grew up with a Godfather. His Did name it? was Roy. He's not Italiano? <laughs> no, my name is Italiano. It's a family name. <laughs> okay. Italiano, you sound like Mike Tyson. NC Johnson and Wax. It's a family company. <laughs> you sound like Mike Tyson. You ever heard of Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson, yes, I love him. Yeah, what do you love him for? I love him. <laughs> what everything. part of his career? <laughs> you love, be careful now. What do you love? You know, I represented him in a case. You, oh, no. Which one? <laughs> I will tell you. Please he, do. <laughs> we have a deal. He, he, once he bought did a, just ask you to. <laughs> he once bought a tiger online. Oh. And when the box came, the tiger was not in it. Oh, it no. was just a skeleton. Oh, no. Skeleton so, of a tiger or a human skeleton? A human skeleton. <laughs> what? This is, it gets weirder. And so we went and found the company that sold him the uh, the tiger box. Skeleton. The tiger box. Skeleton. And he got to keep the skeleton, too. I okay, who skeleton you. did you ever feel? You, uh, it's great you fought for him, but where did the human skeleton come from? The, uh, we do not know. We did not get <laughs> well, that. You got to find that this is the mystery. We did not get that evidence. All we did was get him a real tiger, and he got to keep the human skeleton, and now it is up in his living room, and it wears a doctor's lab coat. <laughs> I will fight for you. Thanks to you. Thanks to me. So this Italiano is Jones of Italiano Jones Law, miscellaneous <laughs> services, and items of law. So he has a skeleton wearing a doctor's lab coat like he's in a vaudeville sketch? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. We all love vaudeville. We go to watch vaudeville movies at Mike Tyson's house all the time. You do, really? Which one? private theater oh i'll tell you we watch the producers well you ever seen this entree the producers yeah never heard of it no no we watch the only thing i've ever seen is the why i guess i was talking about a movie theater (laughs) oh a theater yeah you ever heard of that describe it to me rectangular Rectangular. definitely okay there's a rectangular thing in the front i follow and then there's a rectangular there's definitely a rectangular thing that you you go through in order to get there i follow okay and then what happens you sit down on what i could only describe as a couple of rectangles (laughs) upside down everybody knows what a chair is you (laughs) dumbass have you been injured in a chair have you stood on top of a chair and tied a rope around your neck and jumped off well i will (laughs) fight for you you be dead I, I will fight for you. Could you. I want to sue this ambulance company that let me get out of the ambulance <laughs> yeah, on the this way is, to the hospital. You want to sue the ambulance? To do a podcast. What is the company called? It's called, I think it's called Ron's Ambulance. Oh, they have that same brand in Italy. 
Okay, I have sued them before, and I will sue them again because I will fight for you. But but I you, am here from the law offices. Of yeah, we know where you're from, Italiano Jones. But it's Italiano just, Jones, what kind of money am I going to get out of this? I could get you thousands. I could get you hundreds. I could get you millions. How much money do you want, David Wayne? Thousands. You want thousands? <laughs> you want the thousands instead of the millions? <laughs> yeah, I just that's what I'm in you're the mood for. You're already greedy, David yeah. Wayne. All I need is the evidence. <laughs> I have an idea. I have an idea. If you, maybe you and I could go into business together. How dare you? We're already in business together. This is how I dare. Okay. (laughs) So maybe you have people to sue. We could go to a place to have these kind of suings and trials. All right. You know what a lawsuit is, but you don't know where they take place. A lawsuit is a silk suit you wear (laughs) to a rectangle. (laughs) I do all of my suings in one courtroom. Which one? (sighs) The L.A. Municipal County Courtroom. Okay. Well, I fly yeah. all my cases here. That's a rectangular room. I've been there. Yes. Yeah, very rectangular. It's almost like... Y'all have been to this place. Yeah. What's it, it's called L.A. Municipal. It's, it's like, like municipal. six rectangles. Six rectangles. Six rectangles. Yeah, just and then like what? the Olympic logo. And then what? Okay. <laughs> I understand. So some of them are stacked upon one another. Have you ever been injured by the Olympic logo? <laughs> Did one of them fall off the Olympics and hit you in the face? That actually did happen to me. I will fight for you. That happened to you? It did happen to to me. It did happen to me. I was hit by the red ring. Was it Alberta, 1988, the Winter Olympics? Yes. (laughs) Yes, and? Perfect. (laughs) Perfect? (laughs) That is the only only Olympics I am allowed to preside over. Yes, and? You're not allowed to preside over any other Olympics. Any other Olympics. Why is that? Uh, well, I have been banned from all other Olympic procedurals. Procedurals? <laughs> so you were allowed to sue though that particular Olympics, if especially if the logo falls on somebody. Oh, and, and, luckily, and also Lake Placid, 1982. Oh, okay. Well, I was. I was. I'm looking for a quick check. It's a little late for Lake Placid, but great. I was. Lake Alberta. Placid. Were you bitten Alberta. by the big alligator in Lake Placid? No. There's a giant alligator who lives in Lake Placid. His name is Steve. Steve. Like- if he bites you, I will fight for you. <laughs> How many I'm, people has, has Steve bitten? Oh, Steve has bitten thousands of people. Thousands? Everybody who goes to Lake Placid to ice skate, and the ice is never hard enough, and they fall through. But just, just for conflict of interest reasons, I have to ask, have you ever defended Steve? I have never defended Steve in the court of law. I have, however, defended Steve to his mother when he came out. Out of the closet? <laughs> yes. The alligator? What did you say to Steve's mother? Like, said, what a good friend you are. She was very upset with Steve when he came out because she's a homophobe. <laughs> and I said... She's, they're both alligators, right? Yes. <laughs> and she said... Ow, well, ow, what ow. is your point, David, that alligators can't be homophobes? Well, now, wait a minute. Don't get, don't drag me into this. <laughs> drag him, Scott. Drag him. Drag Cancel him. him. Drag him, sis. <laughs> I feel like all alligators can do what they please as long as they don't eat me. Drag him. Drag so you think they this. can be homophobes? <laughs> you want them to be homophobes? Now, wait a second here. Uh, this Somebody is, is about to get canceled. <laughs> Italiano, can I sue Scott for entrapment? You absolutely can. <laughs> oh, no. Where are you going to do the suing? Do it. I have a new space for you. <laughs> a new space. It's a it's a rectangle. I won't do six because that is that is excessive. We only need one rectangle. You can enter. In that rectangle, there'll be other rectangles. Why would you need behind- to enter if there's just one on the ground? <laughs> Well, it's going to be sort of a three-dimensional rectangle, which I have now learned, thanks to your wonderful listeners, is a cuboid. So- <laughs> cuboid. <laughs> All right, so cuboid. Oh, cuboid. Cuboid. Oh, cute boys. Oh, cuboid. <laughs> Boyd, please get on your mark. Okay. So- <laughs> cuboid. Okay. Boyd. Anyway, we don't need to bother ourselves with Boyd, but <laughs> it's a cuboid. You'd enter. Inside, there will be a judge. Yes, I've heard of a judge, Scott. Mm. Don't you dare start to ask me I've heard of a where do you think a judge usually works a judge usually works from home from home <laughs> a judge works from until home. your innovation which you're in the middle of pitching <laughs> exactly why exactly. would a judge who gets to work from home right want to travel to another place I would think because that's one of the benefits are, of being a are, home-based judge Scott most judges are unsuccessful the legal system is going to shit in this country she because is of lack correct. of cuboid rooms because there are not enough cuboid rooms 
in which to hold sue-ins. L- so you you think the legal system is going to hell here? The, the legal system is going to hell, just like you, Scott. Luckily, you are going to hell in a handbasket with gasoline draws on. Luckily, light them up. I am friends with sis, many judges. Sis, you're friends with many judges. I am friends with many judges. Spell judges. <laughs> <laughs> Spell judges. J U D G S. Do you feel like the judges' problem is that they're all working from home? That's the problem with our legal system. They all, all work from home. From home. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, speaking of winning the suit, I've been meaning to announce this there is going to be a suit that i'm going to be giving away to one of your lucky listeners you're giving away uh and you can win the suit meaning uh, a, a dress suit yeah it's a three oh, wow. piece suit three it's, pieces it's felt uh so we're talking vest pants and vest, jacket pants jacket wipe me down it's a two button suit yeah wipe it. <laughs> she's already all wet over there he what? is he is come he, on david please stop misgendering no, me in 2020 I, I said he i will represent you the way i'm, I'm, the way I'm, I'm taking you to court is, he, we go into yeah. court if any <laughs> listeners do want to win the suit how, how do you how do they get involved in this contest is, we're gonna there's gonna be the fifth collar we're taking right now at our 800 number we're taking calls right now yep okay uh all right uh let's uh it's... let's go to the phones here caller are you there hello hi you're caller number one ah! sorry click all right let's go to the phones hello hey caller, caller you're hey. Ca- hey you're caller hey. number two oh cool you don't win no. bye <laughs> caller are you there your mom your mother's a jerk <laughs> my mother's a jerk well yeah, fuck you you're caller number three you're you caller are. number three click Caller, are you there? I'm on the radio with T-Pain. <laughs> no, T-Pain's not around, but you're only caller number four. You were so close. Uh, All right, bye. Click. Caller, are you there? 911, what's your emergency? Hey, this is caller number five. <laughs> Wait, I think, the, I think the phone lines got crossed here. 911, what's your emergency? We ma'am. accidentally called 911. What's your emergency? We. I, what's your emergency? Ma'am, can I get your name? Because you have just won... A suit. Sharon, I hope, well, that's amazing. What's your emergency? Uh, it's a three-piece suit. Does that change your tune at all? Or oh, okay. Vest included. I love that. A lot of suits are only two pieces these okay. days. Okay, all right, but do you have an emergency? Uh, I guess it's an emergency that we get this suit to you, isn't that right? I called you, isn't that something? <laughs> Wait, is this Sharon? <laughs> yeah. Sharon from 911? Italiano? This is Italiano Jones of Italiano Jones Law Services. I thought Services. you were never going to talk to me again. I'm sorry I said that. I'm and pregnant. What? Scott, hang up the phone. <laughs> not hang up the phone. This is juicy Hang up the shit. phone, Scott. Oh, tell me, I'm, I'm pregnant. I'm, I'm seven and a half months pregnant. I've been You're trying to You're ready to reach. go. I'm ready to go. The, the, is, uh, is it Italiano's baby? I, I do believe so. I, I've only ever you slept with You believe so? Ita- I believe so. I've only ever slept with Italiano. He told me he was shooting blanks. <laughs> That is correct. I do shoot blanks. <laughs> but this day, but this the blanks fired. <laughs> Just like if you were cooking well, in your you, kitchen. Why, the, why, why is every one of your lawsuits cooking related? <laughs> what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, now that you have the suit, I think that solves it. That you know, can get married. I'd love in to this mar- suit. I would love to marry you in this suit. That suit is worth thousands. Okay. Use that for the baby. Scott, hang up the phone. <laughs> no, I'm not hanging up the phone. Tell me, Anna, you're, you're a deadbeat dad. I liked Tell me, you. I liked you. You told me that every woman you met to this point thought you were stupid, didn't take you seriously, <laughs> and that you appreciated that I saw your worth and your intelligence and what made you unique and special. And then you you left. I well, did he, appreciate it. He confided <sighs> into me that he did not want to feel like he was associated with a 911 operator as his main squeeze. Oh, that you didn't what, really? That, that is what you call Are a conflict of interest. Me? That is a I conflict help of people. interest. I help people. I also help people. How Have you ever sweat. been injured? How is that a conflict of interest if you're both helping people? <laughs> <laughs> because I work against them. I am. Oh, suing. you sued nine one one. I am going to sue nine one one. Okay, well, I'm getting calls for other emergencies at this point. So if you could take my you number, you have an emergency. Like, Italiano, You're... Yeah, Italiano, please take my number down. Call me again. Ne- it's nine one one. I will not be able to award the suit. I'm sorry. Just looking at the bylaws until unless you give me your full address right now. Okay, my full address. Scott, is, hang up the phone. <laughs> my full address, Italiano. I'd love to see you. I'm located at fifty nine fifty nine Emergency Lane. Mm-hmm. Emergency lane. How ironic is that? That's where the that? dispatch. Uh, it's how funny and goofy. Um, emergency <laughs> lane. <laughs> it always makes nine one one's got to be funny. Los and goofy. Angeles, California. Nine one one six nine. All right, you'll expect that nine one one and then a sixty nine. <laughs> is that what you guys were involved in? Yeah, it was an emergency. He called me. He said he had an emergency. This is how <laughs> and it we turned into met. a sixty nine. It turned into a full blown sixty nine. Oh, Don't let people tell you that blown. you cannot get someone pregnant. <laughs> Doing 69. 
You absolutely can. <laughs> she just went down the wrong pipe. It went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> oh, she no. started to cough, and now she is saying all of this nonsense. Oh, no. Number one, four. Ah, uh, so good. Italiano Jones. We heard it. It doesn't get better than that. We heard it. Um, Wait, what about the stuff that I do? I mean, it's not better. It's different. Oh, <laughs> I knew it. Well, look, there's there's 13 better than this, according to the <laughs> listeners, because we saw Well, then have... you lied. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Um, and speaking of 13, we're going to get to episode 13 after the break. We'll be right back with more Best of Comedy Bang Bang 2020 Part 1 after this. <laughs> 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 Comedy Bang Bang, we're back, and uh, that same <laughs> plane just flew by, and we had a good bit of business where we, <laughs> off mic, uh, well, I mean, it was on mic, but it was while Let's we were doing the Let's share it with the, the people, because I think they would enjoy it. It was funny. Uh, uh, the, Paul, the Paul was imitating plane, yeah, the like, plane guy. The little plane flying overhead, and then we, we, I imagine that he was saying, I forgot my phone charger. And then I was saying how funny it would be that he was shouting down to the people below, and then Paul said, what if he had a banner that he was dragging behind the plane? And then I said... Oh, I remembered the banner, but I forgot my phone charger. Ironic, right? Isn't it? Uh, don't you think? It loses something in the translation. I feel like <laughs> no, that was funny. And if you don't think that was funny, fuck, fuck you. you. <laughs> also, if you did think it was funny, fuck you. Hey, fuck all y'all. Fuck all y'all. That is the message of Comedy Bang Bang every year. Hey, you know what? I, I because we got so caught up talking about Sprague the Whisperer. Caught up. Yep. I want to shout. Is that a song? You want to shit? Caught yeah, up? it's an Usher song. Oh, okay. Uh, I wanted to shout out Lily Sullivan. Uh, it's her first time on the countdown. It was her first episode. We didn't hear her clip, but we may hear more of her a little later. Yeah, but Lily's so funny. Um, now I feel dumb because we're going to hear from her later. Maybe obviously. I don't know. We I don't want to give anything away. But well, we... now I, now you've put me in a very awkward position. What of everyone knowing that you think she's funny? Yes. <laughs> you didn't want anyone to know that? <laughs> well, if she doesn't show up later in the countdown, then there's she no may. proof that she is. She may show I up I know, later you're playing a KG. I'm KG as fuck. Uh, KG is Nick. That's right. Um, all right, let's hear, uh, uh, let's let's do it. Let's get to it. This let's is get it on. the last clip we'll hear of this episode. This the is ecology. episode, <laughs> The Ecology 13. Number one, three. All right, episode 13. The Ecology. The Ecology. This comes, this is episode 644. Ooh, the Ecology. <laughs> yes, of course, the Ecology episode. <laughs> this was released March 9th. 9th. March 9th. March 9th. So this would have still Ooh. have been in the studio. Okay. And this is an episode called Fall Olympics. Mm. Ring in any cups? No, turn any it upside cups, down. Any C cups? Any oh, D cups? Come on, that's boobs. Uh, <laughs> turn it upside down like the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Boobless. <laughs> Boobless. <laughs> was that like, I know it was funny that it would spell that, but did you, would you like insult anyone by saying, hey, check out what you are. Or let me do some calculations. I think, And yes, then turn it around and go, this idea. is you. I believe that was the idea. I never did that To personally. do it to members of the IBTC? <laughs> <laughs> Itty bitty titty committee? <laughs> <laughs> this is an episode called Fall Olympics, and let me tell you who the participants of this are. This is John Gabris, mm -hmm. who's been on the show for many years now, sure. playing uh, a variety of characters. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> Most famously, Gino the Intern. <laughs> yes, of course. Gino the Intern, who is a, uh, a uh, an intern from Long Island, who is sort of a parody of, uh, like... A certain type of radio fan uh, who likes Opie and Anthony and mm. uh, is is like a real Long Island kind of bro character, mm -hmm. which is um, ten percent different than uh, John Gabers in real life. <laughs> I think that's very generous. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I like to be generous. It's the holidays. Uh -huh, too true, Tony Tim. Uh, so he's on this, and then we have uh, we also have uh, coming up after the clip. We'll hear is Dan Lippert, who is back. That's uh, right. Dan Lippert uh, doing and and I. Unfortunately, we couldn't play a clip. We don't have time to play a clip of uh, him doing Bill Walton, uh, but that was one of his breakout <laughs> characters. That, that's a really funny uh, clip, but we're not going to hear that. We're actually going to hear the clip from the uh, middle guests, who are Darcy Carden and Brandon Scott Jones, both of them uh, actors on The Good Place, which is the NBC show uh, that just ended its run. And Darcy got nominated for an Emmy. Uh, yes, she did. Well deserved. After this episode. Yes, yes. She plays Janet on The Good Place. 
And Brandon Scott Jones plays uh, John Wheaton. Can I say you made it sound like she got nominated for an Emmy for this episode? For this episode of Comedy Bang Bang? Well, the Emmy should cover Comedy Bang Bang, should they not? Yeah, they don't, though. By the way, I was nominated for an iHeartRadio podcasting award mm -hmm. about a a week ago or so. Mm -hmm. And first of all, no one contacted me to let me know this. (laughs) How did you find out? I found out because uh, I have a Google alert for Comedy Bang Bang. Wow, mistake. <laughs> and well no, it just is just for I like know, news I news know. articles. I get about it. it, I get it. So a mistake. news article popped up and it was like iHeart Comedy Podcasting Awards or whatever, uh a podcasting awards nominations and comedy bang bangs in there. I'm like, did I get nominated for an award? No one from Earwolf or anyone contacts me and has not contacted me since. <laughs> 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 I open it up and it's not for the show. It's for ad reads. <laughs> What? I was nominated for my ad reads. That's bizarre. That's be- ex- bizarre. That's bizarre. Uh, and because all of the good comedy shows that were nominated are, of course, you know, Conan O'Brien doesn't have any friends and all, all of the, <laughs> the wonderful comedy podcasts that are out there now that are so funny. Uh, <laughs> no, his show is really funny, but I, th- I think the other ones I'd never heard of, maybe. Anyway, they were all nominated, and uh, I got nominated for ad reads. But it's wonderful to be nominated, um, and uh, can't wait to go to that ceremony. I never got nominated for ad reads. I used to do multiple characters. You, Your ad reads are good. I don't know why I'm getting nominated no, you're for ad- them. I don't either. Your ad reads are terrible. <laughs> They're bad. Hollywood Handbook also nominated. They're, theirs are probably better than mine. Uh, in any case- uh, Well, they do. They do. <laughs> They do. Uh, uh, they do get all re- of the sponsors to cancel their sponsorships. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> I'm aiming for something in between. Do you know they left Earwolf? And yes. uh, I was I was told about it uh, by someone the night before they were going to announce it. Yeah. And for a split second, I was like, "What if I just announce it right now?" <laughs> <laughs> you should have. That would be funny. But then it's like, uh, "Don't do pranks if you don't want pranks to be done on you." Ah. That's a good um, right motto. Is that because what you... people might do them anyway? But if you do a prank, people will do them. More. They will definitely do. Yeah, yes. I mean, we talked about that with uh, uh, like Nick Thune and uh, uh, Brendan Walsh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, their prank war escalated. Unfortunately, where I I, I don't think they enjoyed it. Um, there was a loss of life. That's that's right. One of them died. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna hear from Darcy and Brandon Scott Jones. Uh, this is Brandon's first episode ever on uh, Comedy Bang Bang. Do you think it'll be his last? It may be. No, uh, we'll we'll figure that out as uh, next year comes. But uh, this is uh, two new characters, and this is your episode thirteen. Number one, three. All right. Well, let's get to our first guest. Fuck this yeah. is this is incredible. Have you ever met a lobbyist before, Gino? Uh, yeah, that's like one of those dudes in like a white uh, shirt with a tie. That's that's a Mormon. In, no, no, no. And they have like a little hat and that's they a sit next to the <laughs> They're, in the, they're sitting at a desk whenever you enter a building before you get on the elevator? Mm, that's a secretary. Oh, uh, okay. But, but they, someone in the lobby is what oh, you're... Oh, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. yeah. Are you thinking of a security guard? I don't know. Does he, like... Uh, it looks like the dad from Family Matters. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> that's specifically the security guard from Die Hard. Oh, like. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking yeah, of. Okay. Yeah, okay. Nakatomi not a Plaza. Yeah, yeah he, no, that's not a lobby. He just hangs out in the He lobby. actually never made it into the lobby, I believe. He was yeah, always I, sitting outside in that uh, cop car, and then a guy fell on his cop car, and he oh. was like, oh, shit. It's going down. That's bad news. <laughs> they are lobbyists. Uh, please welcome to the show Chris and Chris Starbo. Uh, hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, y'all. All it's right. Um, Hi, guys. Thank you so much for coming. No, uh, thank you so much for having us. Uh, this is Gino. Uh, don't let him distract you. He's going to be going? constantly fiddling with the levels. I'm going to be fucking with the levels, and I have a sleeveless shirt on. Just deal with both of those <laughs> oh, things. No, we I noticed. noticed. Oh, we okay. noticed. Okay. Which one of you is Chris? I'm Chris. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Nice to meet you. <laughs> now you're also talking to me because I'm also Chris. Okay, okay. now Hi, that's Chris. the funny thing. Is both of our names, they do happen to be Chris. Spelled exactly the same? Exactly, exactly the, same. the same, but stand for different things. They stand for different, That's meaning right. they are nicknames for <laughs> something just, that is. A little bit. A little bit. Like okay. Scott is short for. A Scott Chuck. Mm-hmm. Scott Trick, probably. Scott Trick. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's a nickname for John is sometimes short for Jonathan. Or Gino is short for Gina Vani. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so you have different names. Uh, oh, yeah. Are you are you related? Can we talk about well, that? Well, we are heavily married. <laughs> we are heavily deeply married. married. Deeply married. That's, well, that's then that's not too weird because I think a Chris could always, you know, date a Chris. And, and I'll tell you, weird. 
first. And then you we changed did. it. <laughs> we did. Oh. It was one. Of, you know, I remember our first date. You remember it? Oh, I remember it. <laughs> oh I God. hope she does. I know. I know. Sometimes, I have a uh, bad so memory. She does have a bad memory. Mommy brain. <laughs> I know. She got mommy brain. Yeah, you guys we are, are lobbyists. We are. Well, you say lobbyists as if we're some sort of big government. But no, we are no, not no. that. No. We're thinking global. We have a little dream and a little team. Uh, we have a little. So it's just the two of you? <laughs> so it's a little dream with a little team that's global. <laughs> that's global. <laughs> well, it's starting little, but to grow, you need little first. You do. Hey, mm. you're telling me. Listen, we, look, the, the world's biggest plants start as a seed. That's what I'm saying. And what is the biggest plant? <laughs> I guess maybe uh, India rubber? I don't know. I don't know. Redwood? <laughs> yeah, sure. One big cactus. <laughs> Redwood is I guess the world's biggest cactus is probably the world's biggest plant. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what we're, we're about to grow into the world's biggest cactus. That's right. And we're about to announce a campaign for something that I think is going to shake up not only the world. Wow. You're about to announce it. When are you going to announce it? We wanted to do it here. We're, oh, you're going to do it oh, here? Yeah, I think we're, we're going to do it. Oh, it's a smart move. There's a huge audience exactly. on this show. That's I've been doing it for fucking seven years, and I've, my you've career already has had, absolutely taken off. And you've already had one show behind a paywall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and look, keep looking up. I'm going to make almost $10,000 in 2020. <laughs> exactly. Well, if you think, here it goes. Hey, here it goes. Okay. We, we want the Olympics, Olympics to be... be in win scored a s a p wow okay. we are trying we are starting the campaign as soon as possible to, get, to get the olympics in win scored as soon i mean as how possible. about 2020 that's what well, well I, we have heard that it is spoken for it is spoken for sure, in 2022 I, I, 2024 2026 2028 right yeah they're all they're spoken all for. locked down yeah right. but but 2030 is not locked down at this no, point as far it's, as we've heard do you guys know if you want winter or summer because that kind of depends on now here's that the would thing, be winter. Gino. Here's the thing. We don't care. We we'll take them all. We'll take fall and spring. <laughs> we'll okay, so you want made up Olympics to exactly. happen? No, well, not made up Olympics. But think about it. the first annual fall oh. Olympics. And you want your Olympics Whoa. to be every year. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Bye. First annual. That You heard that, right? This and first you... annual. So the fall <laughs> Olympics. Having official Olympics every fall that's in what, Iowa. That's what we said. <laughs> that's what we said. That is what and we that's said. that's what we, we mean. Will do. What are some of the fall sports? Because oh. usually the summer sports are hot yeah. and the winter sports are okay. cold. I want, oh, right. hey, thanks, Scott. That's, <laughs> that's, what, you, that's what you pay a host for. <laughs> yep. So I'm merely fall, trying to contextualize okay. their... <laughs> Imagine you've seen a, you've seen a ski jump before. Have right? you seen a ski jump before? Let me think. Let me look back through the recesses of my mind and, yep. and, and comb be- through all of my memories <laughs> to see if I've ever seen a ski jump. Oh, there's one. Yes, I yeah. Have. I went okay. to Lake Placid one time to blow a guy, and I saw a ski jump up there. Oh, so you're um, so you are bisexual. He is bisexual. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's a good guess. He's also on the <laughs> spectrum. Could also be, yeah. oh. I'm on the sexual spectrum, and I'm uh, the emotional spectrum. I'm on the emotional the, spectrum. Uh, on the uh, neuroatypical spectrum. I'm on yeah. a lot of spectrums. Oh, right, yeah. right. Uh, Roy G. Biv, of <laughs> <Yeah>. course. <laughs> so dumb. Are you an ENFP? What are you? Yeah. <laughs> what is, you I'm know. all those extrovert, uh, maniacal, fingering pirate. <laughs> Ahoy! <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> No, Gino, you're grabbing your little Yeah, I, I almost peed there. Well, it's not. I have a huge. It's hard yeah, for me to hold the wrench. Piss. I have I to. I have to put a whammo frisbee in uh, <laughs> perpendicular in order to clog up my urethra. Goodness, Understandable. Goodness. Lord. Yeah. Goodness. Oh, it's fine going in. Coming out's the problem. Yeah. The wow. frisbee. Yeah. Four? You have to squeeze the base and pop it off the top like a like a pen tennis ball container. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> great, co- great company. Yeah, we can my all favorite agree. production card. <laughs> sit, Ubu, sit. <laughs> Good dog, woof. Good dog, woof, baby. So, how how do you think? I mean, Iowa, especially right. Winscourt. That's is, right, Winscourt yeah. is, is is not a large town. I've never heard of it. That's, I would imagine you got that one right. Sioux City maybe would have more of a possibility, or yeah, you uh, think uh, so? But we got the land. We do. You know, have we so got much we land. have so much land, and we were we were driving around the That's other right. day, and we were looking cool. out. Thank you. We have. A Cut. We have a we truck. do. We have a truck. <laughs> we have a truck. Right. We have a truck. We have a <clears throat> Toyota. A Toyota Tacoma. Tacoma. Awesome. It's wow. dark green. It's dark green. Did you pay with a, a cash or are you on a payment? Wow, you guys or? are answering all the follow up questions I had. What color? What model? <laughs> 
Uh, did we pay in cash? We did. We did. did. You pay in cash? How'd you get that <laughs> much cash available? Well, we, we've been saving it up. A lot of people in Windscore, we put it uh, our cash into uh, uh, Folgers cans, and we oh, put it okay. into the ground. Into the ground. Oh, yes. okay. And That's when it comes time at Easter every year, we all... <laughs> Say I'm on. Thank you just you, say Jesus. one thing you want. And you like you on Good Friday up. or something. You <laughs> yeah. just dig up yeah, all the exactly. Folgers cans. You've and been everyone, there. You've been there. I've not been there, but it sounds uh, uh, like an amazing tradition. Oh, yeah. it is. It is. It's the resurrection. The way we do it. It's 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 dollar bills <laughs> coming out of the ground, just yeah. like Jesus came out of the ground. And everyone, of, everyone names one thing that they want, uh-huh. and then they buy it, and wow. then they buy it with the cash that they find. And that we they, bought a dark green Toyota Tacoma. <laughs> Guess the color of. The seats. Uh, brown. That, yeah. That's right. That's oh, right. okay. Yeah. Great. That's all right. right. Yeah. <laughs> we would have also taken tan. We would have okay. taken tan. Beige? Yeah. The, yeah. Beige. Okay, yeah. Anything within Light those brown. earth tones? That's yeah, right. correct. Definitely. Correct. Yes. I said I would have taken tan after I fucked Anthony. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how... <laughs> How do you guys expect to lure people into Windscourt? I mean, uh, it doesn't sound like there's a lot to do, but you say you were driving around the oh, other day? We were driving around the we other day. Thinking cool. of ideas. Oh, it was Thank cool. You. Thank, Thank you. you. It was it cool. Was we a, have a car. It was a Toyota It's Tacoma. a Toyota yes. Tacoma. It's a truck. <laughs> Guess what color? Uh, Tan. Dark, That's dark right. Green. The Anthony. seats. Yeah. yeah. So we were driving around. We were driving around, and I, I remember I, you. We were listening to the radio, and you nudged me, I'm and like, we looked out the nudge. window, and you're like, "Look at all that space!" Oh, just miles of it. Miles Why is of the radio it? part of the story? <laughs> oh, okay. um, just we were listening <laughs> because we were listening to a song that we first made our love favorite to. song. Yeah, what is that now? Oh, oh it, it is, is absolutely. absolutely. You can say one of you can answer, answer it if you'd like. Production card for absolutely. <laughs> <It is. laughs> They're playing that on the radio. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're listening to the radio. You take we're, we're listening to the radio. You take a look at all this space. You see all the space. We see a big, big pile of leaves. <laughs> we see a big. Pile oh, just of a gorgeous- is that common out there in Windscourt? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Be- because we, you know, we have trees. Every which way we have mm. every up, down, which way. That's up. right, exactly. Left, you right. look up, you look down, you look to the right, you, <laughs> you look, look to, to the, the left. left, and there's just trees everywhere. Oh, yeah. there's so just rotten with trees, rotting, rotting with trees, <laughs> rotting with rotting trees. Rotting with trees. <laughs> right. Wow. And and we thought to ourselves, now wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be fun to just you just ski <laughs> right down that hill? Just you ski down a hill, and then you just. Let fly. loose, and you just fly through the air. Oh, like a bird, and then you have the skis on. And where do you land? You don't land in snow. No, because we don't get a lot of snow. We don't get a lot of snow. It's an unusual vortex of climate. Interesting. Yeah. That's wind score. That's wind score, baby. Let me guess. You land in the leaves. That, you got it. You got it. I'm just trying to see it. Yeah. yeah. That's I saw it thing. probably right from when you mentioned right, the leaves. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. Got and it. we were listening to the radio. We I, right. I, I oh, yes. felt this from the beginning when you said fall a Yes, that's <laughs> yeah, right. So exactly. we're all on the same page. There. We're we're a lot of leaf related sports. Leaf related sports. We're all on the same page. Page. 110. That's right. Exactly. That's exactly right. You know what? Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> pumpkin carving? Pumpkin Would that be carving? Pumpkin carving. Part of carving. it. Yes. When you think of a pool, what's your favorite thing to do in a pool? That's a great question. Swimming, probably. Yes. You say that, but the real fun stuff is clearing the leaves away so you can do it. Oh, okay. So think, you the know, skimming. Fun. Skimming. <laughs> skimming. That's right. Skimming. Yeah. Skimming. 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 Uh, these skimming. are some of the events, and they have to be... S- Fall based, but based on summer and winter Olympics sports too. You got it right. So cornucopia. So what like, would you do with something like that? Uh, that you would be... fence with them. <laughs> okay. Cornucopia. We could also. Yeah. That's, yeah. You that's, could fence you, with them. You could also you, throw them like some sort of javelin. Oh yeah. Or shot put. <laughs> it would be nice to throw them like a javelin. We would like to throw them like a dang, dang javelin. <laughs> right. Well. So. Uh, By the way. Yes. By the way. <laughs> Is that what you said? I said, up, 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 up oh, and away. Oh, oh, I thought you said, by the way. I was very excited <laughs> for, a, for like a detour. Okay. No, isn't that a fun little We were all excited for a detour. <laughs> so, but how, how, how are you going to lure uh, the Olympics? Here's the thing. Mm. Olympics, when you think of the Olympics, you think international. I think right. seven right. rings. Seven, seven, seven rings. Seven, seven rings. Seven rings international. Seven yeah. rings. Seven the Roy G. Biv rings. That's right. The yes. Roy G. Seven rings. What do those seven rings represent? Uh, they represent the all of the continents. Yes, yes. and each color, mm-hmm. um, this is real, each okay. color um, of those rings, at least one of those colors is in a nation's flag. 
Now that's something that you may not have known. But it's something that you learn when you're trying to get the Olympics to come to your hometown. Hey, okay, all right. And so I, we were looking at the oh, food court in this looking. mall. And I'm we, sorry, what did we just learn? <laughs> That each color of the ring is a color that corresponds to to a nation nation on one of those continents. That's right. Oh, okay. We're talking red, orange, yellow, green, (laughs) blue, not to mention purple. (laughs) Wonderful flags all. (laughs) Wonderful flags all. What does the Antarctica flag look like? Is Uh, it purple? (laughs) It's under ice, so it's difficult to see. I got to go claim Antarctica. I don't think anyone's ever claimed it. (laughs) I want to do it. <laughs> Just like your mama. Oh, oh, oh hey. Oh, that hey. wasn't meant to we're, be. We're an not insult. gonna start doing snaps oh, on no. this show, are we? Hey, what's the difference between Antarctica and your mama? <laughs> <laughs> Get me started. It's, I love a good your mama joke. Men have an easier time finding my mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys have chemistry and it's thick. It is thick. You guys have not stopped the... staring at each other for twenty one seconds. Oh my god. <laughs> My it's goodness. thick, and I'll tell you, we're open as hell. So live your life. Oh, okay. well, no, no, no. As yeah, everyone knows, I'm Polly, and I like to fuck white people. That's why I say Polly want to crash. Jesus, listen, we're God fearing folk yeah. where we come from, but yeah. Jesus oh, fucking Jesus. Christ, <laughs> it's a little too much for you guys. Number one, three. Oh boy, episode thirteen, lucky thirteen, right? Lucky number. Slevin. Slev. Slevin. <laughs> Slurteen. Slurteen. Slurpteen. <laughs> Lucky uh, number Slurptee. 7 Eleven should have like a promotion, Slurpteen. Yeah. Shouldn't they? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> should. I don't know what it would be for. Like on the 13th of every month? On Friday? You get free Slurpteen? I think on whenever it's a Friday the 13th. Yes. They should. Friday the Slurpteen. They should make that Slurpy Day. Free Slurpy Day. Free scary Slurpy Day. Yeah, it's scary. There might be glass in there. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel to There Will Be Blood. Maybe the- <laughs> there might be glass in there. There might be glass in there. <laughs> Where Henry Plainview's descendants. Henry. Working- what is it? Daniel. Da- oh, that's right. Okay. I've Come only on. seen it once. Henry Plainview. Only saw it once and saw Judd Apatow and Daniel Day-Lewis doing a talk back after it. <laughs> Very bizarre. Judd Apatow? Yes, interviewing Daniel Day-Lewis. Of all the people. And he, he, and he asked Freaks and Ge- Geeks questions. Freaks and Geeks. <laughs> Freaks and Geeks, which is partially why Busy was upset at me, because I called it Freaks and Geeks. Yeah. Uh, and you had Daniel Day-Lewis on to talk about it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and not her. I have seen her stitchels. Um... Please don't write to Busy <laughs> and bug her about this. <laughs> uh, but that was a really funny clip. Uh, those guys are funny. And, of course, the Olympics were postponed for a year since that episode. So maybe <sighs> they might come back on to talk about that. Maybe they will. Hopefully the Olympics will not be in Los Angeles, but they probably will be. Are they, where, They're they supposed to be in Japan this coming year. And we were all like, is this actually going to happen in the summer? Yeah, but it was stopped by Japan droids. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that is Japan Droids. A lot of people don't know, but a lot of bands are out there fighting the good fight. The Foo Fighters, obviously, are Foo out fighters, there. Japan Droids. <laughs> Sh- Shonen Knife? Shonen Knife, yeah. <laughs> They're armed. Loaded for bear. And you will know us by the Trail of Dead. <laughs> of course, yeah. They're all out there doing the Lord's work out there <laughs> while you sit in your houses. Getting... Do you know who's not doing anything? Soft Cell. Oh, my God. They're not even a sleeper cell. <laughs> They actually are. Are you fucking? Yeah. They're going to wake up and be soft? (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Someone's going to turn the Queen of Spades. What was it? Uh, Queen of Hearts, I think. Queen of Hearts? I think it was Queen of Hearts. Is that what the song playing with the Queen of Hearts is all about? Uh, Juice Newton? Absolutely. (laughs) She loved that movie. (laughs) Hey, um. Dave Edmonds originally wrote it. What? uh, Dame Edna. (laughs) Dame Edna wrote Queen of Hearts. Dame Edna wrote Queen of Hearts based on the Manchurian. That's as weird as Paul Schaefer writing It's Raining Men. (laughs) That's right. Hallelujah. Um, what is, what is keeping Obama's sleeper cells? What is happening? I've been he, trying to trigger them to wake them up. It's been like four years since he's been out of office. Oh, like, come on. Thanks, Obama. We're supposed to have Sharia law. Oh, come on. We're supposed to have Sharia law. <laughs> we're supposed to have Sharia law. We're on a break. Hey, whatever happened with Obama's sleeper cells? What, What's the deal? Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld What's doing the deal? weird material. <laughs> Boy, Jerry, ever since he landed on his head after toppling out of his garage. <laughs> one of his garages. Wait, what? He's been talking about weird shit. 
I'm saying I'm, oh, I'm this, in a, this an alternate universe. This yes. is what would cause it. A what yeah. if scenario. Yes, of course. I am Uwatu the Watcher. <laughs> what if Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> fell, fell out of one of his garages, <laughs> hit his head, and started talking about Obama's sleeper cells? Why aren't there superheroes in this? Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever said I only observe reality how are you about at, superheroes. How are you able to talk on the moon? How can I hear you? <laughs> I'm a watcher the watcher. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, that was really fun, but the clips only get better from here. If I want to shout it. out Lily Sullivan again. No. She's extremely funny. No. Uh, we'll talk about her later. Uh, that's going to do it for us. I gotcha. Damn it. That's going to do it for us. Rebel we'll, Stiltskin. We'll see you on Thursday. Straw into gold. Speaking of straw, gold. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you on Thursday with part two. And until then, keep smiling. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be our post show gets right. I like it. Keep smiling, <laughs> keep everybody. Smiling. All right. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Keep smiling. <laughs> 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 <laughs>